Only a few days have passed since the conclusion of the Tournament of Power since Frieza was forced to swallow his pride and work alongside the one person he hated the most just in order to survive which absolutely does not sit well with him. A nearby moon that's being focused is suddenly split in half and then after a few precision high speed slices, it's reduced to no more than rubble as we see Frieza seething over the recent events, cursing those who have humbled him already and although he refuses to accept that he still continues to be bested, he remains with the mindset that he is the absolute greatest in the universe. A new plan has been birthed, a plan to eliminate even the gods as Frieza's hatred begins spilling over. However, from behind him, someone is eavesdropping as we see a being who resembles the Grand Priest very closely. This being, while mildly impressed with the power of the self-proclaimed Emperor, lets him know right away that despite his best efforts and whatever it may be that he's thinking of trying, this would never work in his favor, only guaranteeing his certain demise. Frieza, of course, couldn't care less about what this guy is saying, with a condescending comment asking him, and you are? To which he replies, I am simply a being above your comprehension. Frieza seems to take a tad bit more interest at this point, with his anger subsiding momentarily, allowing him to be just a bit more observant for a second. The being then goes on to explain to Frieza not to get the wrong idea. He's only here because of all the ruckus, to which Frieza simply smirks, as he raises his finger and then he unleashes a questionable attack at the being he was just talking to and even manages to hit him somehow, however Frieza is terribly ignorant if he thinks this is over. As he's left floating there in space with no trace of his opponent left, Frieza looks to move on now but a taunting voice is heard nearby asking, now just what was that supposed to be? That last attack, which was one of Frieza's signatures, was easily avoided by the being as we see him climbing out of some sort of portal that he created to maneuver away from the attack in the blink of an eye. The being then goes on to tell Frieza, My my, you seem to have terribly mistaken my friend, offering to enlighten him on why all of his efforts are and will always be futile, as he tells Frieza that he is in fact an angel and this is when Frieza's entire expression changes shock consuming him momentarily. Back on Beerus' planet, this is when we get to see our first instance of Goku and Vegeta in this story as right away, Goku, Vegeta, and Whis, who are all training together, all feel the same thing simultaneously, immediately alarmed by the presence of this very strange power that just popped up. Goku is first to break the silence as he asked if they felt just whatever the heck that was too, which they obviously did, but we seems just a tad more concerned than the Saiyans at this point. Goku says that this piercing energy that just resonated all the way to their whereabouts is very unusual, but one thing is for sure, one of the powers that they just felt was Frieza. As for the other one, with all three of them showing a similar expression, it's clear that whatever threat this may be is beyond both Goku and Vegeta, as Goku says that the key he just felt was unfathomable, but he still decides to go check it out, preparing to disappear with instant transmission. Whis immediately stops him with a pretty good point. Goku can't breathe in the vacuum of space obviously, but instead of just straight up telling him not to go when it seems like Whis already has the best idea of the issue presenting itself, he says that instead, he'll go with Goku and keep him protected while they figure out just what the hell is going on. With a chilling key presence somewhere deep in the universe, Goku, as always, inserts himself in the issue head on in order to stop things before they get out of hand, but Whis is visibly worried as we see him sweating and offering to escort Goku into outer space in order to confirm whatever this is. As the two of them begin to head off by themselves, Vegeta's just like, wait, I know you're not leaving me here, I'm coming along as well, but Whis is actually 100% correct in saying that if any sort of serious mishap has happened, they will need Vegeta later on, so it's probably best that he stays here and remains at full power, for whatever that's worth coming up next. Upon arrival using his instant transmission as well as Whis protecting him from the vacuum of space, both Whis and Goku are absolutely shocked at what they find. What's shown next? is a bizarre scene that confuses the both of them as Frieza is seen badly injured, being forced into a crater by the angel. Goku and Whis are at a complete loss, but the minute the angel turns around, a wicked smile forms on his face as he says to Whis, well it's been quite some time, never thought I'd find you here in the 7th, and without even looking back at his opponent, 
The mysterious angel destroys Frieza in the blink of an eye, blasting him to pieces along with the section of moon he was stuck in. Goku and Whis, while still in shock at what had just happened to Frieza, must remain calm as the situation has gone from bad to worse in an instant. Goku wants to know why this guy knows Whis and why he just killed Frieza like that, but on top of that, a more pressing question is how is this guy so powerful but they've never felt his energy before? This is when the being, much more serious than he was when he was just talking to Frieza, goes on to ask many things like, how was the Grand Priest and is he still just taking commands from those children, making it clear that he's been gone for some time. He then goes on to explain to Goku that he's from a time long forgotten, where some of the strongest gods and mortals that ever existed once called home. This is Murno, the angel of the destroyed Universe 13, the strongest angel of the pack, and the elder brother of Whis. With a devious plan in the works, Marino tells Whis sarcastically to give the rest of the family his regards, not that they would care anyway, but he leaves Whis with a much more ominous message, telling him that he certainly does intend to see him again very soon. However, this isn't the time or place to play family and catch up, but to just keep in mind that Marino is very much alive and as powerful as ever. A destroyed universe, as well as an angel not appointed to a current god of destruction, should both be obsolete as with Marino making an appearance, this would lead me to believe that there may be an additional god of destruction to worry about as well, unless Marino is just so powerful that he can bend the divine rules. However, I think that the latter option may not be too far-fetched as with Marino, while making quick work of Frieza is no longer a feat to go crazy over itself, the fear that he put in Whis can't be looked past as I've never seen him look this nervous, even around Zeno and the Grand Priest. Dragon Ball Super Kai is quickly looking like one of the best storylines we've been able to dive into recently, especially since Dragon Ball Kakumi was discontinued, but the amount of creativity that was birthed from the introduction of the God Realm alone I think is enough just by itself to carry many future arcs in Dragon Ball. Murno, the elder brother of Whis the most powerful angel of all of his siblings and the son of the Grand Priest, has made his presence known after thought to have been shut down after the destruction of his universe, but obviously Goku and Vegeta are absolutely no match for such a god. Progression and ascension is inevitable as what was impossible for Frieza due to not only his inferior strength, but his ignorance as well, may be possible for Goku and Vegeta as they are accompanied by Whis and the Grand Priest must already have some knowledge of this, but if not, this has the potential to get out of hand in less than a page. Upon arriving back on Beerus' planet, just moments after their encounter, Whis and Goku go on to fill Vegeta in on the current situation, with the news of another angel in the universe shocking him as well. Whis goes on to explain that Murno has been missing for quite some time now, but he was somehow able to keep himself hidden from everyone since his presumed death and, unfortunately, everything else he said was true as well, being Whis's older sibling and such. With this realization, Goku does his best attempt at relatability, remembering when he first met his brother Raditz on Earth all those years ago, mentioning just how awful that went too. At this point, Goku even vaguely remembers Vegeta's brother as well, asking why don't they stay in contact, but Vegeta is fast to shut down this conversation that's turned into somewhat of a family discussion. Whis is rather unamused, however, as he tells them that this angel, Murno, was not just his brother, but he was also the angel attendee of one of the most powerful gods of destruction ever appointed, residing in Universe 13. Disregarding the Grand Priest himself, Whis says that Murno is one of, if not the most powerful angel among their species, being highly skilled and vastly dangerous. Whis goes on to state that he, along with the others, surely assumed that Murno, along with everything that once was Universe 13, was erased by the Omni King, but it seems that somehow, Murno was able to do the impossible and escape even the judgment of Zeno. The divine code amongst the angels states that it's forbidden for them to misuse their powers or go all out in battle, and these rules in the history of existence have never been broken by an angel, but for Murno to be showing his face now, it seems that he may have his own schemes in mind, and if anyone would be the first to break this code amongst the angels, it may be him in the near future as he plans from the shadows. 
Goku is shocked at how anyone will be able to not only survive but to escape the Omni King's attacks is something unheard of which suggests the chilling assumption that Myrno may have found a way to not be totally erased. Vegeta however, not having traveled with them and witnessing all this for himself, doesn't really seem as convinced as he says that it seems rather odd that someone so powerful would hide for this long and then just pop up with a hidden agenda and the Grand Priest and Omni King surely have to have picked up on this by now. He demands Whis tell him the truth. Is this Myrno guy really the most powerful angel outside of possibly the Grand Priest himself? To which Whis disappointingly replies, yes he is. For one to escape the wrath of the Omni King has never really been done before as Zeno is the end all be all in the multiverse. If something isn't to his liking, he'll erase every single trace of it from existence without a single thought so for someone, even an angel to escape his grip is unreal speaking volumes to Myrno's abilities as we says that no one, not the Grand Priest, him, his brothers or sisters or anybody are above the Omni King which only confirms that Myrno somehow found a way to survive Erasure because once the Omni King declares something, it's pretty much written in blood. For Zeno to erase Myrno and the rest of his universe, this goes to show that he had absolutely no interest in keeping him or anybody else around for that matter which for someone to escape this, he had to know ahead of time. As Myrno developed, he learned many things that were far beyond the standard practices of the angels which is what made him so strong. He devoted his time to learning as much as he could, everything in his power, even things that lie outside of their teachings. This heavily foreshadows that for Myrno to be able to survive and escape the Omni King, his knowledge must have far surpassed even the current angels, learning some sort of techniques or abilities also allowing him to stay hidden for all this time but for one to be able to defy Zeno like this is still just unheard of. Well well, so this is where you've been living all this time brother. A voice calls from behind them as Goku, Vegeta and Whis all stand shocked. Myrno steps out of a portal similar to the one he created earlier in space as he tells Whis that it's not really what he expected but he figured Whis would be living with his destroyer. Whis is just absolutely speechless asking how in the world was Myrno able to find this place but Myrno completely disregards him and moves his attention to Goku and Vegeta. He takes a step towards them asking, just who might these creatures be? Obviously Goku and Vegeta in no way resemble the appearance of an appointed destroyer so these mortals on a divine planet intrigues him quite a bit as he smirks and we can only wonder why this is piquing his interest now. Usually mortals are to their own realm with everything from snake way up residing over them but the god realm is a bit different and runs by a different set of rules than everyone else. But to allow two mortals on a destroyer god's planet, things seem to have changed quite a bit since the last time Myrno was in Whis's position. Myrno then recognizes Goku as the guy that was with Whis when they previously met, giving them praise on getting back here so quickly and he even ends by mentioning the great deal of power he senses within Goku. Quite a respectable amount at that. However, when he turns to Vegeta, quite laughably he asks if he's just here to clean up after beers or something. Myrno's disrespect for Vegeta goes even further as he says that he can sense that he and Goku possess nowhere near the same power and compared to him, he's an utter waste of space. Now me being as big a Vegeta fan as I am, this really did hurt me a little bit especially since this is all happening post tournament of power but if Myrno is anywhere near as powerful as we says, he may even be able to sense traces of an ability like Ultra Instinct from Goku even though at this point in the story he still shouldn't have mastered it yet. Vegeta begins to bicker with the angel, Saiyan pride resonating within him but Myrno shuts him down rather quickly telling him that he comes here with a purpose. He goes on to tell them that the reason he's appeared in front of them right now is solely to find out who the strongest in the 7th universe is, purely out of interest. Goku looking extremely serious now tells Myrno he doesn't think he wants to find out. Myrno seeming to not even be listening to what Goku is saying anymore ask if it can't possibly be that purple cat you call a god is it? Showing what little regard he holds Beerus to but being the attendant of one of the most powerful destroyers of all time and the strongest angel I can kinda see why. He goes on to tell them that look, this isn't anything against you all, I just wanna see who the strongest is and some other BS about wanting to visit the 7th for the wonderful food he's heard about from there but of course Goku doesn't buy a word of what he's saying. 
having heard the origins of Myrno from Whis himself and then hearing this very odd explanation on why he's come here, Goku demands to know the angel's end goal in all of this and just what it is that he's hiding and this is when things begin to piece themselves together slowly. Universe 13 was erased long ago by the Omni King with still little explanation as to why, other than Zeno just being done with him. For a universe like the Seventh to still be standing after all of this time highly intrigues Myrno as given his low mortal ranking compared to the rest, there has to be another reason. Universe 7 is assumed to be one of the weaker due to this, but for some reason it's still around and this seems to be something that even Myrno with his vast knowledge can't seem to figure out. The secrets hidden within the history and significance of Universe 7 is something possibly only the Omni King himself knows, but as an angel possibly even rivaling the Grand Priest at this point and Whis being restricted from fighting at full power, Myrno may just have his way until the Omni King's hand is truly forced. Myrno, after explaining his expectations and why he's come here to Universe 7, stands before Goku and Vegeta ready to test their true powers and see just what's so significant about this specific universe. He says that he understands that this is kind of a last minute request, but he's absolutely fascinated to find out just what Whis has taught them as mortals. However, Whis steps in immediately in defense of them, knowing the outcome of such a battle, refusing to let his brother kill them and break their walls. Myrno chuckles, mentioning he never thought he'd see the day Whis of all people would have a soft spot for such disgusting creatures like mortals, and as happy as he was to see his brother at first, if he refuses to get out of the way right now, then he'll just have to remove him himself. Albeit his own universe was ripped away from him so suddenly, Myrno is curious as to why Whis still has his and the secrets of this universe and others alike. Seeming to want nothing more than entertainment, Myrno insists that this game is all for his enlightenment as he says that he wants these mortals to show him the true depth of their potential and of course, Goku being Goku wouldn't mind a sparring match with anyone, angel or not. This further intrigues Myrno as it's more than obvious to everyone here that he is superior to all of them in terms of skill and power, however why would Goku still accept this fight is beyond him as he asks just what could he possibly gain from this fight that he can't win. Goku with quite a stern look tells him, let's get one thing straight, he doesn't want to fight the angel at all but if he came here to cause trouble and mischief then he leaves him no choice. This response however deepens the angel's interest as mortals who aren't fearful of the gods are quite rare, however it would seem that Goku still lacks proper motivation to fight him with his full strength so Myrno ponders that only fighting when being absolutely forced is quite a primitive mindset but still interesting nonetheless. Myrno goes on to ask that if there is any reason for these mortals to fight then surely they could work something out in order to push Goku to do so but he must be willing to agree to these circumstances. However, Myrno knows that he could end the both of them in a matter of seconds but what if it was possible that they could get the best of him in a sense and this is what's making him so curious about mortal strength. He then turns his attention to Vegeta to hear what he has to say about all of this and of course he's welcome to fight as well which Vegeta of course obliges saying he smashes opponent's face into the ground angel or not. This reply absolutely delights Myrno as he understands them to both be agreeing to show him the depths of their true powers even though they have absolutely no chances of winning however he still admires their passion for battle. He turns his attention back to Goku now as the first of his opponents but before the battle begins, Myrno wonders just what would it take to get Goku really angry, angry enough to fight him at his full power. Myrno then goes on to create another portal but his intentions this time much more sinister as he looks for one thing that could push Goku off the deep end. What he does next drops Goku's jaw completely to the ground as from the portal, Myrno pulls out Goku's baby granddaughter Pan from Universe 7. Myrno dangles Pan in front of Goku like a toy, saying that it would be rather unfortunate if something were to happen to this mortal family of yours now wouldn't it? Even though angels are unbiased for the most part, these characteristic traits of Myrno are some of my favorites as it helps to the case of him being some form of evil to be able to do this to a baby all to just get Goku to fight him seriously, 
demonstrating both confidence and charisma, which I feel like is something a villain and honestly a hero might need to be taken seriously. Goku demands Myrno let his granddaughter go immediately as Pan recognizes Goku and becomes cheerful not even realizing the danger he's in right now. However, Myrno tells Goku to relax. This is just a little demonstration to him, a small example of his power and the things he's truly capable of, explaining that he searched Goku's feelings and knew exactly what to do to anger him. Being a deity of vast knowledge beyond even the other angels, an immense power, he can do things mortals can only dream of and honestly many things even outside of that, including ending the life of anyone he pleases in the blink of an eye completely destroyed and thrust into the other world without any explanation along with every last thing he loves. Saving Goku for last of course to allow him to watch it all burn to infinity before his eyes, but the choice is his. Will he fight or stand by and watch everyone die? It's at this moment that Pan begins to cry, startling Myrno as he doesn't really know what to do with her so he places her back through the portal that he got her from. Goku becomes enraged, threatening to give Myrno exactly what he asked for, however these empty threats mean nothing to the angel as he says that he's seen Goku's type before and tougher honestly, so unless he plans on backing his words up, then shut up, otherwise fight. He says that he doesn't plan to be here all day, so if they want to take any sort of action or take him up on his offer, now is the time, but all of a sudden, his expression changes as Goku who was literally trembling from anger prior becomes absolutely enraged from the scenarios Myrno put in his mind and putting hands on his granddaughter as his power explodes. Goku takes on his Super Saiyan God form but purely enraged as his power skyrockets exponentially in the blink of an eye. Myrno becomes excited at the sight of a mortal containing God key as Universe 7 is becoming more and more interesting by the second to him. However. Goku is done talking, charging Myrno with speed even impressive to him and somehow is able to land a vicious punch. For Goku to even be able to land a punch on the strongest angel among the multiverse is unreal, even enraged from Myrno's threats to Pan, but the angel is getting what he asked for, however knowing what we've seen from him, this is all a part of his game and humoring Goku's attempts definitely wouldn't be out of his character, but something else may be going on here. Myrno's entire attitude, I feel, makes this character just that much better because his confidence is completely warranted being someone even Whis himself fears. Goku not wasting any time and going straight into Super Saiyan God actually attests to how serious he may have took this battle in a way. While you could say he should have just obviously went straight into Super Saiyan Blue, the properties of Saiyan God may have played a part into why he chose this first maybe thinking of possible defensive measures and healing as well instead of just going all out on the attack from the get go. But in all seriousness, as Myrno said, he could end the both of them, Pan, and any other life he pleases within the blink of an eye which is really an ominous thing to threaten somebody with but enraging Goku to the point of no return by threatening or harming his family may be something Myrno regrets in the near future. As he bursts with anger and sends the angel flying into the distance with what we would presume to be a full powered attack by him. Goku is ready to end all of this nonsense right now but Whis pleads with him that he shouldn't take this any further and honestly seeing Whis act like this should be reason enough for Goku to fear this situation. An angel even stronger than someone who knocked out Beerus with a single chop, I mean what is Goku even thinking right now even entertaining this when he could in fact be wiped out in the blink of an eye. All of a sudden, Goku whips his head around startled as Myrno has appeared behind him when he was literally just looking him in the face in front of him, demonstrating speed that mortals may not even be able to comprehend. Myrno mocks the Saiyans, commenting just what was that attack even supposed to be from Goku, saying that he honestly expected much more from someone being trained by his brother, but what a disappointment this is turning out to be. A fearful realization begins to loom over Vegeta as he thinks to himself, Kakarot's attacks were like child's play to this guy, even in his ascended god form. This guy has been doing nothing but toying with them from the start, meaning that this is a lot worse than they originally thought. 
The angel goes on to further mock the Saiyans, telling them that he'll give them one more chance to show off their hidden powers, as he's excited to see what the future holds for them, so best not to let his family down now, as Myrtle creates another portal and when he reaches through, now. Show me the fruits of your divine training, Myrtle demands as he goes on to fling Goku into the air. I feel like Goku powering up the Super Saiyan God and Blue here pretty much just solidified Myrtle's interest in the Saiyan, so now he wants to see just what these mortals that hold Ascended God Key can do. Goku is completely out of his league right now, but Myrtle continues to push the fight as he creates more portals pretty reminiscent to how Janemba used to fight, and he punches Goku from left, right, above, attacking from every angle in this vortex of portals he can manipulate. Myrtle continues to bounce from portal to portal while Goku can basically do nothing but get knocked around as Myrtle keeps shouting at him to prove himself, to prove why this weak universe is so significant and what powers they really hold, brutally attacking Goku to no end, finally sending him into the ground below. Goku however doesn't tap out just yet as we see him ascend back to the sky, but it's clear that he's nearing his limits as he too states that this guy isn't even trying yet and he already feels like there's nothing he can do. Myrno shows his disappointment in Goku's obvious exhausted appearance, saying that I guess you ants will never really be more than that, just ants all the same. Vegeta's realizations deepen at the sight of Goku just being completely annihilated with little to no effort as he starts to think to himself, I can't believe how badly Kakarot is struggling against this guy and if he continues he'll surely be killed in no time. Without Marino even feeling a need to show them any of his true power at all, Vegeta already speculates that even Goku's Ultra Instinct wouldn't be enough if he was somehow able to use it right now. How coy. Myrno suggests, you couldn't be more right even if you won't admit it aloud. Ultra Instinct, just like anything else you mortals can come up with, would be absolutely useless against me. You have zero hope whatsoever, Saiyan, as Vegeta shows shock at Myrno knowing exactly what he was thinking. Oh my, you seem surprised that I was able to read your thoughts, Vegeta. But another one of my many skills I possess, however, I do admire your admission of defeat after seeing how pointless your friend's attempts were but I still want to test your power as well. Vegeta maintains composure saying, well that's interesting, you can read minds huh? But no matter, we'll find a way to win just like we always do. But Myrno cuts him short, telling him his empty threats mean nothing. There isn't a single plan they can force to defeat him as he's seen many just like him before. He further goes on to tell Vegeta that he is flawed, his race is flawed, their ideals, powers, Everything, all of it is flawed, but he himself is not. He tells Vegeta that he actually reminds him of someone in particular from his native universe, Universe 13, a Saiyan much like him. Mention of other Saiyans has Vegeta's full interest now as the only ones he's ever heard about are the ones from Universes 6 and 7, as Myrno goes on to explain to him that his universe used to be one of the most powerful and high ranking to ever exist. This meant that both the gods and mortals were fearsome alike as the Hakaishin destroyer was one of the most savage gods ever appointed as he happened to be a demon as well, of a similar race to one they fought on earth years ago recalling the demon king Deborah. Myrtle then goes on to explain that universe 13 was once home to Saiyans as well but these Saiyans while not as abundant were extremely powerful and this Saiyan in particular was a savage ruler over the galaxies. Kinda like how Frieza was here, enslaving planets and ruling through fear and military power doing as he pleased. The destroyer of Universe 13, as we see in the next panel, bears a more than eerie resemblance to Deborah, however twice as menacing as Myrno says that his destroyer was not nearly as lazy as Beerus and loved doing his job, destroying anyone who stood in his way with awesome power but his strength was like nothing Goku and Vegeta have ever seen before so they can't even fathom. The galactic tyrant who looked identical to Vegeta however was also a mighty ruler, a king in his own right who led a powerful army doing as he pleased, ruling the galaxies with his power. But even as strong as this Saiyan king was, he was eventually defeated by the god of destruction of his universe along with his entire Saiyan army but things in universe 7 seem to have taken quite the interesting twist as it seems that Beerus has taken some form of liking to these Saiyans. Vegeta demands to know more about these foreign Saiyans but Myrna was all too tired of talking at this point and 
To be honest, he doesn't owe Vegeta any sort of explanations as he would rather just carry on with the fight. This is when he turns his attention back to Goku who seems to have forgotten the stakes involved here as Myrno sticks his hand back through a portal, not to attack Goku but once again he pulls Pan into their dimension as a stark reminder to Goku as to just why he's fighting right now. Goku panics at the sight of his granddaughter in this guy's hands again, telling Myrno to let her go right now even though he knows there's really nothing he can do, but he charges towards him anyway. Myrno, however, toying with the Saiyan once again, does just what he asked and lets Pan go, tossing the baby to his side, sending her hurling to the ground, but the minute Goku reaches his hand for her, Myrno opens up another portal and Goku disappears in it without a trace, leaving Pan, Whis, Vegeta, and Myrno on Beerus' planet. What an interesting mortal, Myrno seems to proclaim, however, emotions still hinder him. Let's see just how far he's willing to go for his own survival and to save his family. Now, even as all of this is going on, Pan is still kind of free falling, which was a little funny to me, even though this all did kind of happen in a matter of seconds. However, we can see in the next panel that Vegeta catches her, cursing Myrno under his breath. Myrno then turns his attention to Vegeta as he looks to see what he can do next. He tells Vegeta that he hopes he proves less predictable than Goku, as Goku lacked what it took to get the job done, letting his feelings and compassion cloud his judgment. He says, fear not however, Goku is still alive for the time being. He's just been put in time out in a cold, dark, empty void and it's up to him to figure out how to escape. Vegeta on the other hand, he says, well it seems that you and I share a similar trait coincidentally. The entire time while fighting and talking, Myrno has been searching the souls of both Goku and Vegeta, which is exactly how he knew to trigger Goku with Pan. You are a cold-blooded savage much like myself, Myrno proclaims to Vegeta, and you also possess the will to kill. A true warrior's mentality. However, your friend lacked the will to kill and would much rather spare his enemies than complete the job which was ultimately his downfall, but someone like you is the perfect rival for me. We are similar. He then goes on to say that Vegeta may not be quite as strong as Goku, but his instincts are what make him strong. As he descends, he says to Vegeta, you're the last one left, Beerus is sleeping, Goku is gone and Whis knows better than to get in my way, so what will it be saying? Will you show me the power that this wretched universe possesses? Need I remind you however that, shall you refuse, you will suffer the same fate as your friend and everyone you know and love will be finished. But dear Saiyan, I do hope you know what you're in for. And I hope you know what you're in for, my dear boy. A voice calls from behind Myrno that shocks him as he seems to recognize that voice right away. Behind them all, the Grand Priest has descended onto Beerus' planet, surely sensing this odd disturbance in the multiverse as he says, My, it's been far too long. Oh father, Myrno says, pseudo-sarcastically, it's so nice to see you. I'm sure you're ecstatic to see that I've survived. I'm doing well, no need to ask in case you were, and I see you're still your same old self as well. Now, things are getting quite interesting as Myrno has already been stated to be the strongest angel and his knowledge and powers have far transcended typical angels. However, the Grand Priest is the father of these angels and pretty much the Omni King's lieutenant as he also has the authority to carry out decrees of the gods. The Grand Priest, however, hasn't come for a reunion of any sorts at all, as he says in a very firm voice, your very existence is unacceptable, Marino. You were presumed erased along with the rest of Universe 13 after violating the Code of the Angels along with dealing with mortals. Marino barks back at the Grand Priest, telling him that what I do is none of your business and not your problem. You sentenced me to death and left me to rot all because of some stupid code that says we can't use our own gifts. The look on Marino's face then completely changes as, for the first time, he has quite the evil expression as he says, and just so you know, I don't care who you are. He tells the Grand Priest that he doesn't answer to anyone anymore since they all turned their back on him when Zeno took everything from them and he just stood there and watched. I won't let you get away with any of this, he says. Vegeta, feeling a little more empowered now that the Grand Priest has showed up, warns Marino. I'm not sure if you're incredibly crazy, incredibly stupid, or both. 
But this isn't a good idea what you're doing right now. You're going to get yourself killed if you keep this up now that you've been found out, so best to just give up now. Now personally, I'm not really sure how I feel about this comment from Vegeta because just 5 minutes ago, he had a really dwindling faith in this whole situation and while we all know that the Grand Priest is one of the most powerful beings in existence, Vegeta isn't really the type to look at someone else as a savior or if that makes any sense to you guys. Marino however has already explained that he doesn't care who stands in his way at this point. As he says to Vegeta, my you still haven't figured it out have you? I don't really mind what any of you have to say at this point. The game has already begun as Marino lifts his finger and another portal is created behind him. Believe me when I say that this isn't over though. Such a nice reunion seeing you again father. And you too brother, Marino says as he steps backwards into the portal. But we best resume this party at a later date. Until then. And he disappears into nothingness. Whis immediately hangs his head in shame as his father approaches him, apologizing for not doing anything to stop or even slow Marino down as he was just frozen in fear the whole time which is very unlike Whis. But he says that above everything, he didn't want to break their code and share the same fate as well. The Grand Priest fully understanding his decisions tells Whis, it's fine, unless I give the order you and your siblings still shall not display your full powers. While I did not see this coming and he was able to remain in hiding for generations, now that he has exposed his existence, he will be found so fear not son, the Grand Priest says. Vegeta goes on to tell the Grand Priest that Marino came here saying that he wanted to find the strongest fighters in this universe, saying that this was his plan but something still seems weird about this whole thing. Goku battled against him but after being toyed with, he was sent to some cold dark void but Mino confirmed that he was still alive so that's a whole nother issue at hand. The Grand Priest warns them that, as his son, Mino is not only a powerful warrior but extremely smart and crafty as well even though he shouldn't be here anymore and will be dealt with in due time. As for Goku, he says he may know where he is. Seeing the Grand Priest's confidence, Vegeta asks so just how do we stop this guy then? He was able to counter every single thing Kakarot did with ease, he can read our minds and we couldn't even wrap our heads around his abilities. He says that he and Goku's powers are nowhere near the angels so what's the point if they're pretty much still powerless when he still has this whole hidden agenda that he wants to complete as the three fade off in thought of their next move. In a different dimension however floats Goku in the middle of a space even more empty than the hyperbolic time chamber saying that he can't feel anyone or anything around him and on top of that, the air is extremely heavy. Goku refuses to waver however intent on finding Merno as the encounter with the Grand Priest ends, saving Goku, Pan, Vegeta and Whis from being killed. But something Merno said in this chapter really stuck with me. His anger towards the Grand Priest was extremely telling, almost going off on a tangent at how they left him to die and just watched as the Omni King tried to destroy him so I feel like his plan in the end may be geared towards the Grand Priest and Omni King since he didn't seem to really want to hurt Whis. His comments to Vegeta were also pretty interesting saying that they're both cold blooded warriors, savages with this instinct to kill and this says to me that Merno may not be lying when he says that he just wants to face the strongest fighter in their universe, almost as if the blood of a saiyan runs through him. Goku still in this undisclosed location is alone for what seems to be endless miles as he's surrounded by complete nothingness in this void or realm or wherever Merno sent him. Goku goes on to comment just how odd and empty this place is, saying that not only is it so cold and lifeless but he can't even sense anything at all here. His anger hasn't subsided though as he curses Marino promising to find him but Goku has to act quick if he expects to make it in time to save anybody. At this exact moment however Goku senses something strange behind him but as quickly as it appeared it's gone again as Goku once again can't sense anything at all but this little slip up won't get away from him as he's determined to find whatever energy that was. He places his fingers to his forehead in an attempt to zone in on this energy and teleport to it with instant transmission but when he does, he just moves to more nothingness as he still can't lock on to any energies at all. All of a sudden the energy presents itself again but this time it's accompanied by someone as Goku looks in the distance and says, 
Hey, wait. Who's that guy? As an odd figure floats across from him. This seems to be the source of the energy Goku sensed prior, as he also comments that this guy looks oddly familiar for some reason, but Goku could never have imagined what he's just stumbled upon as the figure's raspy voice creaks. Well now, what do we have here? I haven't seen a mortal in billions of years, how interesting of a surprise. The person that stands before Goku right now eerily resembles the god amongst gods, the alpha and the omega of the Dragon Ball universe, the Omni King, but this being seems a lot more sophisticated than the Zeno we know as he eyes Goku, both intrigued at what they've just bumped into. As Vegeta, Whis, and the Grand Priest stand conversing further actions on Beerus' planet, it seems that the gods have requested Vegeta cease all involvement in this matter immediately. Vegeta angrily protests to this, saying surely they aren't trying to save him from ending up like Kakarot, as unbiased as angels are supposed to be, so why would I back down from a challenge now of all times? But in defense of Whis and the Grand Priest, it does make sense that they wouldn't want mortals further involved in their trials because Whis and the Grand Priest know exactly how dangerous Mirno is and it probably would be better for everyone if they just handled this themselves. The Grand Priest goes on to explain to Vegeta pretty much just that, as he says that they as angels will correct one of their own, as Mirno just intends to use Vegeta and the other mortals as pawns in his little game for his own enjoyment, so it's not Vegeta nor Goku's job to stand up to him or try to stop him for that matter. The last thing he says, as ominous as it is, is that Mirino is even more deceiving than he is powerful, as Whis goes on to assure Vegeta that he can leave Goku to them as well, promising to find him and return him to their realm shortly. He also makes a pretty good point saying that if Mirino really wanted Goku or any of them outside of the Grand Priest dead for that matter, he'd done it already. This situation has grown beyond dangerous for all of them as they still don't know the full extent of Myrno's knowledge and power so far as we says that he'll inform the other angels immediately after he's taken Vegeta and Pan back to Earth. Back on Earth, and this is something I've kind of been wondering about this entire time, but Gohan is stunned to learn that Pan has just vanished as Videl tries to explain to him, yeah, one minute she was here and then the next, just gone. And this whole time I was wondering just who was watching Pan and wouldn't somebody be going crazy if some arm just kept dragging her in and out of a portal? But outside, this is when Vegeta descends to their house, telling them to open up as Gohan immediately recognizes not only his voice, but another key with him as well saying, could that possibly be? As the door opens and Vegeta presents Pan back to Gohan and Videl. Obviously a lot of questions are following just how in the world Pan ended up with Vegeta out of thin air like that, however things are much worse than either of them can even imagine. Gohan goes on to thank Vegeta anyway for returning Pan home safely as he says, one minute she was just playing with her toys then the next, she was gone, did you have anything to do with that Vegeta? It's not like her but thank you anyway. But Vegeta's face can be read all too well, as you can almost see the conflict within himself, as Gohan asks, Um, hey Vegeta, what exactly happened? Vegeta, still silent, begins to walk off, but Gohan is beginning to put some clues together now, as he yells, Wait, Vegeta, what happened? I don't sense my dad's key anymore with Vegeta halting in his tracks and telling Gohan, listen to me very carefully. You need to be ready to fight at a moment's notice and you need to be ready to fight with everything you've got. Worry is beginning to present itself on Gohan's face but the last thing Vegeta says to him is to do what he must but when we call for you, we need you to be at your peak and you need to do it fast. We'll explain the rest later as Vegeta flies off leaving that to simmer with Gohan and Videl. Vegeta heads back home to Capsule Corp shortly after, but when he descends, he has quite the surprise waiting on him. Bulma is sitting outside waiting for Vegeta as she says, Oh, hey Vegeta, glad you're back. You have a visitor. He says you guys met this morning or a few hours ago or something like that. Vegeta with this confused face says, Huh? 
a few hours ago. What do you mean? Wait, what does he look like? And it's at this point that Vegeta turns his head only to find Mirino at his house having tea at his table as he says, My, good afternoon, Vegeta. Surprised to see me? With a slight chuckle. Leaving Vegeta beyond shocked and forced to fend for himself and his family against the strongest angel without the help of the Grand Priest, Whis, or even Goku. Marino has infiltrated Vegeta's life on a personal level now as he sits at his house so nonchalantly with his wife having tea. Turning his attention back to his conversation with Bulma, he can't help but be amused as she tells him the story of how she slapped Beerus, to which he says he can't believe a mortal actually laid hands on a god and lives to tell the tale. How remarkable of a woman you have here, Vegeta. Not surprising at all, however, from the wife of the Saiyan Prince, he says, but Beerus was always soft. How ironic, as their conversation goes on, as if Vegeta wasn't even there. Boma goes on to defend Beerus, saying that I wouldn't exactly call him soft, as she can surely recall back to how that same encounter ended. However, she says that Beerus definitely has developed a soft spot for them on Earth, because they do all sorts of things like feed them all this great food and things like that. She goes on to mention how Marino is so much easier to talk to than all of the other angels they've met, not that Whis is hard to talk to, but he's always so busy. But then she goes on to tell Myrno that he's such a nice guy and he should come visit them more. By the way, they do have some of the best food in the entire universe. So it seems like nothing bad has kicked off on Earth yet. However, Myrno has something up his sleeve and Vegeta knows it. He just can't put his finger on it yet as Myrno goes on to respond to Bulma saying, of course I will. Then going on to ask for some snack she had mentioned earlier with Bulma going off to prepare it leaving Vegeta and Mirino for a brief moment. This is when Mirino comments on Vegeta having a lovely wife, almost reminding him of his wife back in Universe 13, or former wife in Universe that is, but with the small talk out of the way, there is a reason Mirino has arrived here on Earth, as he says that he has something he wants to ask Vegeta, so listen very closely. When we cut back to the closed off realm wherever Goku was sent, He's floating across from this strange bearded man we saw in the last chapter, asking him, um, hey, who the heck are you? This place kinda has the same feeling as the world of Void that I was in during the Tournament of Power, but much colder and darker, he says, and I definitely didn't expect to find anyone else here. The bearded elder scolds Goku, telling him that it's polite to introduce yourself first before asking for someone else's name, so Goku introduces himself properly, asking once more, just, who are you, sir? The Elder goes on to state that for a regular human to be here is beyond strange, as even the gods and angels themselves don't come here often, so why him, and why now? He also says that he can sense a great power within Goku, along with immense rage as well, seeming to have just gone through a very troubling experience, as the Elder searches his feelings, saying that there's no way you came here on your own. You were sent here by someone, weren't you, Goku? Ah. I see, the old man says. You're from the seventh dimension and seem to possess the power of a god as well. Your mind is clouded with worry and fear for those named, uh, let's see, Vegeta and Pan, is it? Don't worry, in your time, they seem to still be alive and in no harm's way, as Vegeta has returned Pan safely back to Gohan, in case you were wondering. He was brought back to Earth by the Grand Priest following your encounter with the Fallen One, who has also appeared in the seventh dimension. Now, everything going on right now may seem really confusing as this guy just kinda came out of nowhere while Goku was roaming this huge empty void, but at least he confirms to him that Vegeta and Pan and pretty much everyone else are safe for the time being. As Goku goes on to ask, wow, does that mean Vegeta was able to defeat Mirino to get Pan back or did something else happen? The Elder clarifies saying that no, Vegeta didn't battle Mirino, or at least he hasn't yet, which even if he did, he would've felt just as Goku did. Myrna was playing a game Goku and Vegeta could never win, or at least not right now. Not how they are. There is more going on right now than you can understand, so don't expect this to be some walk in the park for you, mortal. But there is a way, much like there always is, so relax yourself, he says to Goku. He says that he can sense that Goku's hunger, much like his anger, is great right now, so he suggests that they grab a bite to eat so he can better explain the situation at hand and why they really have no chance of winning as they are now. 
Goku immediately gets bummed out about them having absolutely no chance against Mirno right now and not being able to do anything as he roams around as he pleases. But the mention of food cheers him up right away. Only, where are they supposed to get food around here? This is one of Goku's first important lessons he shall learn on his journey as the bearded man laughs at this response telling him don't be so naive. You can't always rely on what you see. Just because something isn't there and you can't see it doesn't mean that it isn't real. This is your first mistake, mortal. Because there is nothing there now does not mean that there will be nothing later. You of all people should know that anything is possible and this is liking to power as well. One can grow infinitely stronger despite where they are now or how much they doubt themselves. Sticking his hand out solemnly in front of him, he says to Goku, I want you to remember one thing that your current god failed to tell you. Before destruction comes creation, he recites, as a brilliant flash of light shines in front of them and before Goku's very eyes. A full course meal is presented out of thin air from the old man's magic as they sit to discuss the true severity of this situation and how Goku and Vegeta may eventually be able to defeat even a god. With Mirino growing ever so impatient back at Capsule Court for Bowman to bring this food she promised, he complains about how slow she's taking and upon saying he can't wait any longer, he takes it upon himself to create another portal and just to take the dish that Bowman was making for him. Now, I guess this is just a trait amongst the gods for never having really experienced the creativity of mortals, but in the next panel, we see Marino absolutely ecstatic at this ice cream, just how Whis and Beerus were, commenting on every possible aspect of it while Vegeta just sits there watching him, struggling to figure this guy out. When you're finished eating, get lost, he says, which Marino replies, hmm, 30 minutes. I'd say I have about 30 minutes until Whis figures out that I'm here and comes for me. Figured it may take him longer, but 30 minutes should be more than enough, but in the meantime, since I didn't get to see your true power before, how about we test you until he arrives? You didn't think I forgot, did you? I said I wanted to see both of your powers, he says, smirking with Vegeta angrily replying that he'd never fight him here. They'd level the entire city if they did that, so no, not happening. Mirno stands to his feet, however, still smirking, asking Vegeta, Haven't you noticed? This city is quite the metropolis on this planet, one of the larger ones, wouldn't you say? With so many people living here, you don't find it suspect that there isn't any noise around? Seems pretty desolate to me, as we pan across the upper portion of the city to reveal just how alone they are. Vegeta is in complete shock that not one single person seems to be within the entire city as he demands Mirno explain just what he's done to the people here as he says in an ominous voice, My my, they're all gone Vegeta, even your lovely Boma. Now that I have your attention, let's begin the game shall we? As he appears behind the Saiyan, forcing Vegeta to fight for everyone's sake whether he likes it or not. Myrno has done god knows what with the civilians of West City as he wastes no time in engaging Vegeta in a battle, starting with a devastating attack that levels a portion of the city. My my, do I have your attention now Vegeta? Myrno asks, taking pleasure in the terror he's causing Vegeta from devastating the city. I wonder where all of the people went, along with that lovely Boma of yours. Do you think you can save them I wonder? Coming here and invading my home is one thing. But snuffing out all of the innocent people who had nothing to do with this and did nothing wrong, along with my wife, is something I swear you'll regret. So if you're looking for the strongest this universe has to offer, then look no further, Angel, Vegeta says angrily. I really don't care if you're stronger than me. That doesn't change the fact that I'll smash you to pieces. So prepare yourself for the true power you've been searching for, Marino. Vegeta roars as his power erupts and he transforms immediately into Super Saiyan Blue knowing he has no time to half-ass in this fight. Whoa, starting off with blue, are we? Myrno says as he shows little regard to Vegeta's transformation. This is disappointing, but go ahead and try, I guess, he says, further degrading Vegeta's power. I must tell you, Vegeta, you must know that even with all this effort, you simply won't win, Myrno says ominously as, for the first time ever, we see an angel become battle ready as he takes off his cloak, tossing it to the side, telling Vegeta, well, 
Since you're turning it up a notch, I guess this only matters if I do as well. Might I remind you that everything is riding on your strength to best me here. In order to see your wife and kids again, if you fail, then their blood is on your hands. Having heard enough, Vegeta charges right in cursing Merino, demanding he leave his family out of this as the battle begins, but Merino effortlessly dodges Vegeta's attack, telling him, whoa, slow down there Vegeta, you can't hurt me if you can't hit me, he taunts. Vegeta doesn't let up, however, as he tries everything he can to at least touch Merino, who, much like Whis, maneuvers around him with such ease and grace. Wow, if this is the best Super Saiyan Blue can do, then I really am disappointed, Merino says, as he separates himself from Vegeta by a few meters, resetting the fight, but as Vegeta begins to charge in again, he's met with an elbow as Merino slips through a portal again, stopping him in his tracks, telling him, how do you expect to win when you can't even pay attention, you trash mortal? Merino continues to abuse his portals to beat up Vegeta, making sure to keep telling him how easy this is. It's not a surprise to see that you're struggling, Merino says, as he makes a portal in each of his hands. I can still sense quite a bit of fight in you, however, so let's see if you can handle this, mortal, he says as he unleashes a relentless flurry of attacks through the portals that Vegeta is barely able to block. Merno is continuously pushing Vegeta into a corner, taunting him, telling him to show him that raw, untapped power that will surely save his family because that is what's on the line here. I've had enough of your games, creature. I will spill your blood if it's the last thing I do, Vegeta roars, reaching his snapping point from these taunts and onslaught for Merno as his anger explodes. Take this, he says, as he swings a ferocious punch through Merno's own portal connecting cleanly with the angel and actually sending Merino flying through a house. Vegeta, not only exhausted, but battered and bruised after all of those attacks from Merino, huffs, telling Merino, looks like I got you. When we see Merino, however, this is the first time he's actually visibly taken damage as he's even bleeding a little bit, commending Vegeta for using his own portals against him. How impressive, he says. As Merino rises back to his feet, however, it will once again seem that he's completely unaffected, but remains impressed as he tells Vegeta that this is exactly what I wanted to see from you, mortal. This is your strong point, but funny enough, I can still sense quite a bit of holding back from you, Vegeta. I'm growing impatient. I know you possess it. Release your full power just like you just did. The way you fight, if you can read your opponent's next move in battle like you just did, you can surpass them because unlike Goku, your strikes are cold and brutal, and each one is meaningful. You have the will to kill rather than spare. Now, Merno says, getting back into fighting stance, we still have a little bit of time left before we shows up, so let's do our best now. I want you to hit me with everything you've got, mortal. I want to see the true powers of a Saiyan God. So you want everything I've got. If you really want to see the depths of a true royal Saiyan's power, then don't move. Stay right where you are, Vegeta roars as he gets into a familiar stance and then his energy begins to erupt as he raises his power to staggering heights. Don't move, Vegeta says, as he brings his hands together for probably his most devastating attack, the final flash. Oh wow, okay, Merno says, looking pleased at Vegeta's attempt this time. You still have enough energy for a final flash? I'm impressed, Vegeta, really. This should be interesting. Vegeta shows shock briefly for Merino having no hesitations about challenging this attack head on, but Vegeta warns him not to underestimate the power of a Saiyan. Vegeta then releases a full powered God Key Enforced Final Flash as the ginormous beam shrouds the entire city in its light directly at Merino. However, Merino, even in the face of Vegeta's largest attack, simply says, This is too easy as he simply makes a portal big enough that it engulfs Vegeta's entire beam, vanishing into who knows where. A cold sweat begins to overcome Vegeta as he says, what? what? Impossible. He got rid of my final flash with such ease. What am I supposed to do now? Merno smirks at Vegeta, telling him, now that was good enough, I guess, but do you see what I mean now, Vegeta? you have absolutely no chance of winning. You are hopeless. 
This isn't over though, I was just starting to have fun, so let's continue. But Vegeta has given it literally everything he has with that last attack, looking almost completely exhausted, but there is still one form he's yet to take on that could at least allow him to survive long enough for Whis to arrive. However, what lengths is Mirna willing to go in order to bring this phenomenal power out of Vegeta? In the sky nearby, we see Goten and Trunks who are flying at a pretty fast pace as Goten asks Trunks, hey, what's the rush? What happened? But Trunks, having lived in West City his whole life, knows something is wrong immediately. There should be way more energy levels in the city right now, he says. What's happening? It's like the whole city just vanished. Mom too. Something bad is happening and it feels like my dad is having a really tough time with whatever it is, he says, as they pick up the pace even more, making a beeline towards the city. Back at the battlefield, Vegeta's fight seems to have already reached its climax, with Vegeta already having spent a ton of energy, and Myrno obviously not even trying yet, but his stance tells us something totally different, as it looks like the angel is about to prepare a counterattack of his own, telling Vegeta, don't blink or you may miss this. The next thing he does, as Vegeta can only look on in preparation, is make a flurry of portals flinging them all around, demanding that Vegeta continue showing him how far his power actually goes. This whole thing is nothing more than a game to the angel, as Vegeta is fighting to just stay alive it seems like, as Myrno takes it up a notch telling Vegeta, now, let's see how you handle this, as he begins firing key blasts into the portal in front of him, and they start flying out of all of the portals surrounding Vegeta in every direction. There's way too much going on for Vegeta to try and simply evade this attack, as he says he has no other choice, opting to deflect them instead as we see him do here. Once an opening presents itself, Vegeta is able to hop out of the way of the rest of the blast, rising out of the smoke into the air, but behind him, Myrno has already appeared, commending Vegeta for being so fast, and as he expected, he avoided his attacks in the end, so how about we try this one off for size, as we see him holding a massive supernova-sized attack over his head. Now think fast, Vegeta. This thing will only get hotter and hotter, so you have to be quick, he says, as he hurls the giant attack at the Saiyan. Vegeta stands aghast as there's no way he can stop something like this with the amount of ki he has left, and with the size and speed that things coming towards him, dodging seems unlikely as well as Vegeta says to himself, think, think, what now? But time is up, as the massive attack lowers itself onto Vegeta in the earth, creating a gigantic explosion and a flash of light that can be seen for miles. But what of Vegeta? Off in the distance, Trunks and Goten, who were closing in on that very location, notice the large explosion as it stops them dead in their tracks. Nobody they know has an attack like that, and they can't sense God Key, so Trunks and Goten decide to continue on closer to see what the deal is. Back in the city, the angel has created a massive crater from his last attack, as he floats in the sky, kind of disappointed that Vegeta didn't have any more tricks up his sleeves. How boring, and here I was having a bit of fun, Mirano says, but as he descends back to the ground, he notices that Vegeta is still very much alive, as he lands next to him, honestly impressed that the Saiyan can still move. Vegeta's fighting spirit still hasn't been shattered yet, as he insists that he isn't done. You're a tough one, the angel says, but I should expect nothing less from you of all people. I held back quite a bit of power to see if you'd survive, and my, you did. You're definitely much tougher than your friend, but in the end, there's still something you lack. Something you don't possess that's holding you back from your true potential. This is when the angel goes on to make a shocking proposition as he tells Vegeta that what he's missing is a great teacher such as himself that could bring out the true depths of his potential. As for a mortal, Vegeta is beyond an impressive specimen. Now, I personally feel like this moment in the story right here is a huge deal, as this angel has previously given off some really elitist vibes, so for him to acknowledge a mortal like Vegeta to be worthy of apprenticeship by himself when he looks down on other gods like Beerus is pretty interesting. For a mortal, you possess power unheard of, and I am thoroughly interested in seeing your limits because, unlike Goku, you have killer instinct along with a strong mind. So what do you say, Vegeta? Polish your skills with me as my apprentice. 
it doesn't really matter why I'm choosing you. I just need to know, do you accept or not? Now, this is quite a turning point in the story as the Angel of Universe 13 seems to be quite self-aware and having an actual underlying scheme all along, admitting that he wishes to train Vegeta but still really no clarification as to why. Why him and why now? From the south, Goten and Trunks are well within range of Vegeta and the Angel now as they turn around and take notice of them approaching as well. What? Who are you? What did you do to my dad? Trunks yells as he and Goten fly over to the battlefield in shock and awe. Oh, look at that, Vegeta. Seems like the kids have arrived finally, the angel says, coming to save his father, no doubt. Well, if he chooses to get involved, I'll have no other choice than to erase him and his little friend, however. Maybe I should go over and introduce myself. Wait, hold it, Vegeta says, staggering back to his feet now on red alert. You stay the hell away from them, he says, with as much firmness as he can muster. Wow, and now you're even back on your feet, the angel says. My goodness, Vegeta, you really are quite amazing. Oh, he says, seeming to recall something. Seems like it's that time already. The angel goes on to tell Vegeta that, well, I know your body is all weakened and everything from our fight, but I kinda gotta let you know that you might want to brace yourself, like, right now. Yeah, that final flash from earlier, I didn't get rid of it. I was just holding on to it to get back to you before I left and it looks like time's up, so I'd turn your attention that way if I were you," he says pointing to his right. Out of nowhere, a giant portal opens up once again, exactly where the angel pointed and Vegeta's former super attack is ejected from it, ripping straight towards Vegeta who has absolutely nothing left in the tank for this. As he can only stand there and take the full force of his own attack, Trunks and Goten are stricken by the sight as they can only watch Vegeta be destroyed before their very eyes, with Trunks writhing in panic. Before they can make any moves, however, the angel appears out of a portal next to them saying, why hello there young warriors. Goten and Trunks go on the defense immediately, preparing for a possible battle, but Myrno knows that he is well beyond their comprehension as he tells them to relax. He can already sense the fear in their hearts, but he isn't here to kill them. I would actually love to chat with you for a bit, Trunks. There's quite a bit I would like to know, he says, patting Trunks on the head. Huh? Vegeta says, waking out of his sleep in a panic. Where am I? What? It's okay, Dad, we're at the lookout, Trunks says, as when he comes to, we see Piccolo, Dende, and Goten with him as well. Wait, Trunks, you're okay? Where's that despicable angel, he yells, but Trunks assures him that they don't even remember anything themselves. One minute he approached them, and then the next, they were all here and he was gone, he says. This is when Piccolo steps in, telling them that he saw most of the fight. This guy being able to take Vegeta out with such little effort is astounding, and with Goku missing, things are exceedingly grim right now. Trunks chimes in saying that they could use the Dragon Balls to bring back the people of West City and Myrtle shouldn't know about those so maybe it could work. My my, how hysterical of you mortals to think I wouldn't know about something such as the Dragon Balls, a voice says from behind them as they all turn around in shock to see that the angel has now appeared here at the lookout, one of their most sacred places to gather. And now that you mention it, I think I'll take these off your hands and be keeping them for myself right now. If anyone objects, you are more than welcome to try and stop me, the angel says, as the Z fighters can only stand in helplessness and Merino continues to toy with them mentally, as he holds the Dragon Balls hostage for himself. This story has taken quite a dramatic turn in more ways than one, as not only has Merino dodged Whis and the Grand Priest for the time being, and infiltrated the lookout, one can't forget that offer to Vegeta that was never answered, an offer for more power. Power beyond even Goku, all for the price of apprenticeship under a blasphemous angel. His true goal and Vegeta's underlying pride may melt together pretty well in the coming chapters, but even though I can't imagine them doing many things or anything at all that Myrna himself can't already do, taking the Dragon Balls hostage has just tripled how critical the situation is getting. Vegeta demands to know what he plans on using them for, as surely he has no need for them, so just what is this all for? 
The angel replies that he's been actually thinking about eliminating Zeno, but that would presumably be out of such a weak dragon's power to kill the gods. Zeno is my prime target, Myrno says, but since this cannot be done with these Dragon Balls, he'll just use them for something more within his powers. As he opens up another portal dropping the Dragon Balls inside, he says that perhaps he'll use them to wish for maybe more of whatever that delicious dessert that Bulma made for him earlier was while he waits. This was an extremely interesting learning experience, he says. However, Vegeta, don't forget about my previous offer as it still stands. You can do as you please, but my time here with you all is coming to an end as I have much more important things to attend to. Before he leaves, however, he takes a moment to acknowledge Dende, telling him don't try anything funny like attempting to create more Dragon Balls because he will know and won't hesitate to take those from them as well. Also, don't even try to use the Namekian Dragon Balls either, he says, because I will know about it and I'll come take those from you as well. And lastly, before you can even conceive the thought, if you attempt to gather the Super Dragon Balls, I already have the means to stop that as well. Dende and the rest of the Z Fighters stand aghast at what they've just heard. Merino has covered all of their possible options after stealing the Earth Dragon Balls and even implying that he has the power to interfere in the case that the Super Dragon Balls are used as well. So what now? Goku is still missing and it seems like all they can do now is wait for the Grand Priest to handle things. As the angel creates another portal, he makes one last remark before leaving, saying that as for the people of West City as well as Boma, they're all still very much alive. Just like his final flash, he, Myrno, had simply teleported them to another location for the time being, but this isn't finished. As he begins to disappear within the portal, the last thing he leaves them with is that perhaps next time, he might decide to pit the entire earth against himself. That sounds like a ton of fun. But until next time, mortals, and then he's gone. Everyone is shaken now that there really does seem to be nothing they can do against this guy, as Piccolo curses him, calling him the epitome of pure evil, using them like pawns in this sick game. Dende steps in, however, with the controversial revelation, saying that maybe they're wrong about him to some extent. He goes on to say that this might sound weird, but he doesn't sense the slightest bit of evil coming from that guy's soul, which is really weird, especially considering what he just told them. Also, if he was pure evil, then they all would have been able to sense it, so there's something definitely different about this guy, obviously other than being a god. As much as he hates to admit it, even Vegeta agrees with him, saying that if this guy really wanted he and Kakarot dead, he had many chances to do it, but something still isn't right here. This angel's plan is extremely well thought out, angering Vegeta even more that he's being so methodical with his moves. He claims to want revenge on Zeno, but hasn't killed a single person yet. Well, other than Frieza, but he had that coming. Will he launch a direct assassination on Zeno? What is his next move? They need a counter plan and they need it now as time is running short. Back in the realm of unknown, Goku seems to be having a much better time than Vegeta as we see him finishing a hefty amount of food, commenting that he had no idea this much was here where everything is nothing. He gets back to his feet, commenting that even for someone like him, he doesn't think he's ever eaten that much before and it probably was the best food he's ever had as he thanks the strange elder but now he has to get back to trying to get out of here. Well, I've honestly never seen a mortal eat that much and so quickly before the old man says, but then he goes on to tell Goku that, unfortunately, he can't leave this place. Escaping from here is impossible. Even something like his instant transmission technique will never work here, telling Goku that he can try as much as he wants, but he's stuck here for now. Goku's face shows disbelief as he's stunned, saying that this definitely isn't good. The old man goes on to say that this is a rather strange occurrence, but then there's really only one way that's even possible and that doesn't include trying to muscle his way out of here somehow, but having Myrno teleport him back to where he came from himself because it doesn't even seem like he meant to send him here in the first place, which is the strange thing. Perhaps his god key interfered with the teleportation and dropped him here somehow. Goku pleads with the old man, asking him, well, just what should he even do at this point, to which the old man tells him, why don't you ask Myrno yourself, pointing to his right to reveal that Myrno has arrived alongside them in this mysterious realm. Well, well, Goku, it's rather surprising that you ended up here of all places, the angel says. It's good to see you again. However, we have quite a bit of catching up to do. As we cut back to Earth, Piccolo is freaking out at the mere thought of the last words that Myrno left him with. 
Him versus the entire Earth. Has he gone mad? What sort of insane plan is this? Vegeta, however, knows that he's dead serious with everything he said. He may even go as far as to do with the entire Earth what he did to West City and teleport them all away. It seems like since he had so much fun with me and Kakarot that he's looking to get his fun out of anyone he can before executing his plan on Zeno. Trunks steps in saying that he and Goten might not be that strong, but they've been doing their fair share of training on and off as well, and if they fuse, then maybe they could help too, with Goten agreeing. Vegeta goes on to say that as much as he hates that blasted technique, and it's definitely a terrible idea, they're at the point now where they have no other choice than to use everything they have, and that may even include everyone with a sliver of impressive power that they can find in order to beat this guy, but is he really powerful enough to carry out his plan on the Omni King? And even still, where is Goku? Back in the realm of the unknown, Myrtle has arrived before Goku and the old man as he admits that Goku wasn't supposed to be here but it is nice to see him again. Goku can't believe his eyes as the angel literally just appeared out of nowhere, before his very eyes out of thin air. Goku having had enough at this point gets into his stance as he vows to end this here and now but the old man steps in to remind Goku that this is not a matter where he can just muscle his way around and get what he wants. He must understand before taking action. For one, he says, this is not the real Murno. I made this copy in order for you to confront him and address your fears, gaining a better understanding of this place and what's going on right now, similar to the abundance of food he previously manifested. Hey wait, Goku says, I thought you could only make food, now you can make living things too? This is unbelievable. His energy feels the exact same as what I felt on Beerus' planet, how did you do that? The old man goes on to tell Goku that anything is possible in this realm. This copy of Myrno possesses equal battle power to the real one as there isn't anything that he himself cannot create. However, this goes for all gods and angels, he says. Myrno is much, much more powerful than most of his brothers and sisters, the old man admits, so he'd be an excellent sparring partner for you, Goku. He won't be holding back so I suggest you don't either. I hope you're ready, Saiyan, the angel says, as an unexpected rematch and training session begins. West City is gone. Goku is gone. And the Dragon Balls don't even think about it. There are no other options at this point. For a being of this angel's caliber to be defeated by the remaining warriors, they must come together to devise a plan, but with the severity of the situation, there's really only one place that they can go now. As we continue on our Universe 13 journey, Vegeta and the others have all gathered on Beerus' planet with no other place that they can go that they'd even be relatively safe from their foe. As they arrive in the God Realm, they're immediately met by Whis, who upon seeing them arrive, can confirm that his suspicions were true all along. During his search for his delinquent brother, Whis suspected that his next destination may be the Earth, but he was unable to make it in time, but seeing as how the Angel has pretty much just waged war on the Earth for the next time that he arrives, it's a good thing that they did show up here. Everyone from Piccolo to the androids and even Majin Buu have assembled. As the only remaining fighters that they have left, they can't afford to be at any more of a disadvantage than they already are, so they've come here. This is no longer an issue that only pertains to the gods themselves. Vegeta declares that they've refused to just stand by and watch this angel destroy everything that they've built, so everyone here is tagged along because they wish to be trained by Whis as well so they can fight too. Well then. Since this matter no longer involves just the god realm, I suppose it would be my responsibility to help you all as well," a voice suddenly says from behind them as the Grand Priest suddenly appears on Beerus' planet as well. The Grand Priest starts off by saying that he indeed senses a dreadful battle looming in the future and because of this, the Grand Priest has chosen Vegeta. The Prince of Saiyans will now face the father of the angel race in battle to better prepare himself for the upcoming fight, even though they know little of what to expect from their opponent. Hmm. A chance to fight the strongest of the angels, the second in command of the multiverse. Sounds like a perfect opportunity for me, now let's see what you can do, priest, Vegeta says as the training session of a lifetime is about to commence for Vegeta. But from a far off region in the sky, a small portal appears revealing none other than the mischievous angel himself as he spies on his future opponents unbeknownst to them. 
Myrtle can't help but be filled with joy as he spectates his plan coming together beautifully and soon, the Grand Priest and Zeno will be dealt with as well. All according to his little game and everybody right now seems to be just a pawn, even the Grand Priest somehow. As we cut back to the conversation with the Earthlings, Master Roshi who has also been assembled has been chosen by Whis to be the leader of this team that will fight against Myrna. Roshi stands shocked that such a decision will be made because he isn't anywhere near as strong as the rest of them, but Whis insists that his knowledge and wisdom far exceeds what he deems necessary right now, and besides, they'll devise a plan that takes advantage of everyone's individual strengths ensuring that they're all useful in this battle even if they aren't as strong as Goku and Vegeta. Now then Vegeta, the Grand Priest says as they continue their conversation before battle, I believe that our opponent has told you that the biggest difference between you and Goku are your battle style and mindset. This is in fact all true and if you can improve these skills then yes, you can defeat your opponent. However, your battle power as it is right now is astronomically below mine and I'm afraid that even at your absolute best, as you are now, you wouldn't even be able to make me flinch. But I am extremely interested in what you can do against me still, Vegeta, he says. Furthermore, he goes on, while I don't possess the same abilities as my son, my battle power still far exceeds his own and as you know, I am known as one of the most powerful fighters in existence, second only to the Omni King himself with powers that have never before been seen by mortals and gods alike. So do your best, Vegeta. While that is a lot easier said than done, Vegeta would never even think of backing down from a challenge, even an impossible one such as this one. He says that if he wants any chance of winning whatsoever, then he has to approach him with the full intent to kill. I'll do everything to make sure I have the edge on you, Angel, he says. Be ready. The Grand Prix shows quite a sinister smile at the sound of this as he welcomes Vegeta to try his absolute hardest to kill him. After all, this will be the ultimate test in order to stand any type of chance of defeating Myrno. Vegeta versus the Grand Priest, while obviously a really lopsided affair, seems to be an absolutely necessary step towards defeating their opponent who, while he was watching them, almost looked as if he was expecting this outcome. However, Vegeta looks at this as a means to test his true limits, not having to worry about holding back in the slightest as there's no way he could ever harm the Grand Priest. Right? Vegeta powers up right away to Super Saiyan Blue, foregoing all other prior transformations, but even so, as the Grand Priest goes on to further comment as well. Very nice Vegeta, you are at maximum power, but as I told you, this still won't be enough. In a flash, undetectable by everyone spectating, the Grand Prix zips in front of Vegeta and delivers a vicious punch to the gut, stunning him momentarily and then sends him soaring to the ground below with zero effort, thus proving the Grand Priest's point. Vegeta knows that he's definitely out of his league in this battle, however it is fortunate for them that the Grand Priest is on their side and it's taken some sort of an interest in Vegeta's strength. Usually the thought of a mortal standing up to a god is blasphemous in itself, but Goku and Vegeta have long shattered that barrier separating the two, and even the Grand Priest seems to feel that Vegeta has something in him still that can be brought to the surface skyrocketing him past his lifetime rival Goku, if he can obtain such a power in the amount of time that they have left, which isn't much. We've seen Grand Priest Goku before, as he was trained briefly by the Grand Priest post the Tournament of Power in Super Dragon Ball Heroes, but this seems to be our chance to possibly see a Grand Priest Vegeta, as there's no way that tutelage under such an instructor won't lead to an ascension, but for now, Vegeta must find a way to break the fourth wall in order to be at least on par with one of the most powerful beings in existence in the upcoming battle where even Ultra Instinct won't be enough. We soon find ourselves in an unknown realm that looks to be a small deserted planet in outer space somewhere. This is so annoying a voice calls out as then we look over to see that the angel has taken refuge in this mysterious dimension while his plans progress. Hmm, maybe I should give them a year he says referring to the amount of time he'll allow Goku and Vegeta to train. However, he then goes on to say that in regards to Vegeta, surely he wouldn't need that long at all. At best 6 months and he should grow into a great warrior without having to wait all that time. The next thing we notice however is that Myrno isn't alone at all in this weird realm as we see a dozen other clones of him hovering around in this weird dimension with him as well. 
The chatter starts to erupt as all of the different Murnos feel the need to add their input as well as we hear another one saying that he can't wait an entire year or 6 months. Maybe a month at best should be fine but another one says no more than a week should be necessary. You all need to relax. All of you, the original Murno proclaims from the front of the pack as he scolds them for being so hasty. All we have to do is wait right now. The time will come but we must be patient for the time being. The game has only just begun and right now, all of them know nothing. Soon we'll have our revenge over all of them in due time but for right now, I'll allow them to have just a bit of hope to hold on to. As time begins to pass with the Z Warriors aligning their forces for the upcoming battle, the Angel of Universe 13 is seen in a meditative state as he spectates the happenings across the multiverse. All of a sudden his eyes burst open with surprise and rage as he sees something extremely bothersome. Wait, he says. Vegeta refused to let me train him but he allows my dreaded father to be his teacher? As we see the angel grow increasingly furious at this development, he curses them all, complaining about overseeing Vegeta's development being his job and how unfair it is that the Grand Priest is taking away everything from him once again. This is really the first time we've seen the angel act out a character like this as usually he's very charismatic and confident, but right now he's acting like a huge child. I've been way too lenient with these disgusting creatures, I should have obliterated them all from the start. But don't worry, as soon as I have my fun with the strongest this universe has to offer, I'll eliminate all of them, including Zeno, as the angel's true plan starts to come to light. But this is when he erupts with a rage that we've never seen before, or a violently wisping around him. I'm at my limit, he shrieks, I refuse to allow my father or brother or anyone to ruin my plans. I will break all of you. All of you that abandoned me and turned your backs when I needed you most, that cursed Zeno ruined everything and yet you still stand by his side. I will crush all of you and then I'll rip Zeno to shreds myself, he shrieks as we can only assume after all of this rage what his next move will be. Back on Beerus' planet, the Z fighters that have assembled to train under Whis are discussing their strategy. Gohan seems to have come up with a pretty impressive plan as Whis praises him on his wits as Gohan says that this would probably be best if they had no other choice. Whis goes on to say that now Gohan should probably focus on trying to help Vegeta in case he runs into some trouble in his battle with the angel because even though Gohan's plan is very tricky and very dangerous, with the combined powers of he and Vegeta, they should be able to at least throw him off his game. Speaking of Vegeta, behind Gohan, he and the Grand Priest are busy at work sparring to no end as Vegeta has once again been chosen by an angel for apprenticeship but his training with the Grand Priest will prove to be much different than anything he's ever experienced. I won't quit, Vegeta says, as we see him extremely exhausted and barely able to stand after clashing with the Grand Priest. Don't you dare stop now. Keep fighting me. You're too powerful, Vegeta says, shaking as he gets back to his feet from the pure might the Grand Priest exudes. The Grand Priest, however, goes on to give Vegeta more praise in his efforts and the training they've been doing. For a mortal, to be able to produce as much power in such a short amount of time like he has is very impressive, he says. I'm not fighting to kill you, of course, that would have happened ages ago if so, but you are beginning to make me break a little sweat, Vegeta, which is shocking to say the least. I wonder how far you're willing to go. Hmm. <laughs> Even though your power is far beyond my own, this is where it all starts, my true ascension. I'll show you all how strong I really am in time because I realize now that you've chosen me for a reason and that doing all of this will make me infinitely stronger. You're easily the most powerful opponent I've ever faced before, but for some reason, I don't fear you. I will defeat that angel, Vegeta says. Now let's be- but the Grand Prix suddenly vanishes. All of a sudden silence ensues all around Vegeta as he immediately knows that something isn't right. Is this a part of the training? Where did he go? He was just standing right in front of me and he vanished while I was just looking at him. What is this? But this is when another presence is felt just north of him. Oh, my apologies, did I interrupt something Vegeta? A voice says from behind him as he turns around to see Myrno has suddenly appeared once again. Hope you weren't planning on finishing whatever you were doing here because Vegeta you misunderstand. I am the finisher, nobody else. It looks like your progress with my father has paid off a bit, no? 
Although I find it quite humorous how you refuse to accept my offer but agree in allowing my father to oversee your training. Surprisingly cowardice of you Vegeta but it doesn't matter now he says. From this moment on I will be your opponent now that you've grown quite a bit stronger. I want to be the one to see the full extent of what you can do. Now let's continue shall we? Let's pick up where we left off in the same crater I left you in before you were saved as Vegeta looks around and Murno has teleported them back to where they were before. This is it Vegeta. I hope you know what's on the line for you. But don't worry I also have a little surprise. I brought all of your friends here as well he says as Vegeta looks around and all of a sudden all of the Z fighters that were training as well appear beside him not knowing what just happened or how they got in this crater. Since you were all so desperate for my father and brother's training, I'll now just test you all myself. But you don't need to worry about those two. I've kicked Whis and the Grand Priest far away from here and placed them under a powerful spell that blurs reality for them. They're both extremely powerful however so I'm sure that they'll break the spell in moments but if they want to come here to stop me, they're gonna need about an hour to do so in which time I'll have long killed you all. Now Vegeta, like I said before. You will show me the full extent of your power, but since we're all here, who would like to go first? Krillin speaks up first, asking does he really intend to have this fight on Earth when all of these innocent people have nothing to do with this, but the angel assures them that the people of Earth no longer exist here anymore so there will be no interruptions and no need to hold back during their battle. All of them are gone. Their friends, families. Even their beloved children such as Marin and Pan, which enrages Gohan as he demands to know what happened to Pan, Videl, and Chi Chi. I already told you, they're gone the angel says, but if you really want to know what I did with them all, then how about you try and make me tell you. Gohan, he says attempting to provoke Gohan into approaching him, but Piccolo stops him just in time telling him to stick to their plan, and from what they already know, Myrno isn't interested in killing everyone right away so everyone should be fine for the time being. My, how pathetic, the angel says, still attempting to provoke them. You still won't take action even though you know I will destroy anything and everything you've ever known and loved if you don't. No worries, I don't have all day. I'll just have to break your bodies and then erase your souls and after that I'll continue the destruction of everything precious to you. So what will it be mortals? Even with these continuous threats however, the Z fighters don't falter as we see even Yamcha preparing for battle and Gotenks is fused as well. Myrno has been extremely efficient in making sure that not only Whis but the Grand Priest can be removed from interference at a moment's notice, which is probably the scariest thing happening right now if we're being honest. I mean, to even be able to put the Grand Priest under a spell in the first place is kinda blowing my mind. But Myrno specifically took this interest in Vegeta's decision to be trained by the Grand Priest instead of himself, showing peak rage that we've never seen before. Training Vegeta and maximizing his power just in order to crush him at his best is turning into an obsession for the angel as all throughout the story, there continues to be this mention of something special or something different about Vegeta that everyone wants to see. The Z Fighters have all powered up to maximum with Goten and Trunks fusing into Gotenks to get the absolute most out of their strength before they start their plan to fight alongside Vegeta. But not how many may think. Master Roshi steps forward as well but he isn't meant to fight himself and neither are the others. He approaches Majin Buu telling him that it's time that they do what they originally planned on Beerus' planet. For now, everything is in Buu's hands. They're all counting on him as individually they stand absolutely no chance here but Boo gets it and he promises that he'll keep all of them safe while still doing his best to help Vegeta. He begins to tear out portions of his body as even Majin Buu himself has doubts about this fight and what they're about to do. But here goes nothing he says as he begins to toss the torn off pieces of his body all around the battlefield. Majin Buu's flesh begins to consume all the powered up Z fighters as they look to be absorbed however disgusting they may have viewed this technique in the past, it's their only shot right now as even the androids are being absorbed by Buu. I felt like that was kinda funny how the androids are getting absorbed by someone other than Cell and to be honest that, that might be a cool video topic, I'll think about that in the future. But anyway Majin Buu now having covered all of the Z fighters calls them back to his body and instead of just absorbing the most powerful among them. He absorbs everyone minus Vegeta as his transformation begins. With all of these massive powers being consumed at once, Majin Buu begins trembling under all of this new strength 
still obviously capping out at Gohan since Vegeta hasn't been absorbed and when his transformation is complete, a new and even more powerful Super Majin Buu is before us. Myrna, while still not impressed, says that these guys sure know how to make things fun. However, he's seen this before and even if his power is incredible to say the least, still doesn't make a difference. But Vegeta for the first time is honestly happy to see this face again. How foolish of you all, Myrno says. Well, I hope you can still entertain me with your new powers, both of you now. And don't forget what's on the line. Both Majin Buu and Vegeta assume their stances as the battle looks to begin. Buu charges in right away to kick things off, but the angel easily dodges his first punch. Majin Buu, however, is moving and fighting in a way that does begin to impress the angel, as he says that if he wasn't the obvious superior, Buu may have had the power to destroy him, but as of right now, he's still powerless against him. I will admit that you are much better than I expected and your powers are quite interesting. But it will make no difference, the angel says. Well that's good because I'm only getting started, Boo says, so don't worry. If you really want to see what I can do, then stay right there where you are and I promise you'll love this one. What Boo does next is create a half dozen or so Super Ghost Kamikazes that charge directly at the angel, but Reno is still unimpressed saying that a ghost show doesn't change the facts at all as he creates a bunch of portals making all of the ghosts disappear. All at once he releases them from all angles around Boo and as we know, one simple touch will cause detonation. As the ghosts fly into Boo however, they don't explode and Boo himself seems to have vanished. Impossible, the angel says. He he vanished? No, this is the after image technique. Those sneaky rats. Majin Buu suddenly appears behind the angel warning him that he is more than he thinks as all of those who have gathered to protect the universe have become one within him. They are one and maybe Myrno should pay more attention to his opponent instead of underestimating them as he puts his hands around his face and releases a blinding solar flare that stuns the angel. My eyes, the angel shrinks. What did you do, you pathetic morals? I can't see anything. You should have finished me when you had the chance, Angel. Now shut up and turn into chocolate, Boo says, as he fires a candy beam at the blinded Angel, and it's a direct hit. Boo changes the Angel into a chocolate bar, which honestly stuns not only Vegeta, but honestly me as well, because I would have never imagined Boo, any version of Majin Boo, being able to not only rival, but catch off guard a god of this caliber. What the? No way, Vegeta says. This is incredible. Did he did he really just defeat him that easily? Something is amiss here. Either Boo is far more powerful than we ever imagined, or this angel is up to something. Which is it? This fight is over, Boo says. You won't be harming anyone anymore, but I must admit that was much easier than I expected. But all of a sudden, a portal bursts open behind him, and out steps none other than the angel himself. My, my, that was quite the surprise, the angel says. I never took you for a trickster at first. Very shocking and interesting. I truly, truly do feel bad for you lot, and I can't understand what you guys were thinking, the angel says to Boo. Did you honestly believe that allowing yourselves to be absorbed and fusing into one would be enough to stop me? I will say, you lot are entertaining and your tricks are quite amusing, but you are still just mortals, so best not forget that. I come from a time long before your era and far beyond your capabilities of understanding. You would need more knowledge and time than you're capable of to even make me sweat, let alone destroy me, the angel says. Majin Buu is not only fuming right now, but extremely confused as well as he says that there's no way the angel is still here when he literally just ate him. So what's going on? A pulsing vein can be seen in the angel's forehead as he seems to be losing his temper really quickly now. I must tell you this also though, mortals, to think that you would have eaten me after turning me into chocolate, the mere thought of being eaten by a mortal just in an attempt to defeat me boils my blood to no end. And now, you're really making me angry. And then he disappears again. I think it's time we end this little game, Majin Buu, the angel says, as he appears out of a portal directly behind Buu again, grabbing him by the head. You're not the only one who has their tricks. However, mine work. Now let's end this. The angel prepares an attack at point blank as he looks to blast Boo's head off, telling him that he would have killed him sooner or later anyway, but now this is over. How interesting.
So this is where you've been hiding, a familiar voice says, as we see a finger pointing directly at the angel, and then a slicing beam is fired that causes Myrtle to let go of Majin Buu, and this is when we see that golden Frieza, the first person to have contact with the angel, has arrived here as well. I've been searching for you, angel, Frieza says, as I thought you would be here. I really don't hope you thought I'd be dead now, did you? He says, snickering. Of course I was able to survive, even if barely, and I knew that you would be so predictable as to show up here first. Frieza goes on to further taunt the angel, thanking him for their last encounter, as he says that he was able to learn quite a bit of useful information and Myrtle opened his eyes up about a lot of things. You humiliated me and left me for dead in space, and I'm just here to return the favor, Frieza says. But this time, I will be the one who lives and I will most certainly kill you. Frieza goes on to further comment that it seems that you've already mingled with these idiots on Earth, but that doesn't matter right now and they will soon be dealt with as well. But you are my first priority and you will soon learn why Emperor Frieza is the most feared name in the entire universe. So prepare yourself, Angel. Vegeta can't even believe his eyes right now as Frieza should definitely be dead and drifting off in space, but he looks fine and stronger than ever. How did he even know we'd be here, Vegeta says. He isn't working with Myrno, is he? As we cut back to the Angel, Myrno looks a tad bit worried for the first time after this recent development. Ah, it's you again, he says, looking at Frieza. I see that you were somehow able to survive. This is indeed troubling for me now, but if it's death that you're chasing, then rest assured you've come to the right place. The Angel of Universe 13 has all but gotten serious with the Z Fighters who are pulling out all the stops just in order to have a chance at survival, let alone defeating him. Majin Buu has absorbed everyone at their full powers and was able to catch Myrno off guard, but this still wasn't enough to even touch him. However, now that Frieza has shown up, ending this before Whis and the Grand Priest show back up has become just a bit harder now. How Frieza survived and made his way all the way here no one really understands right now, but his anger and rage at being humiliated and left for dead in space once again seems to be driving him to finish this fight himself. But what do you think he possibly could have meant by Myrtle opening his eyes to so many things after the last encounter? As we return to our latest dilemma back on Earth in Universe 7, the first thing we're shown is the shocked faces of Vegeta, Super Buu, and the previously extremely confident and angry Golden Frieza. But why? Frieza was the one that showed up with the surprise attack. Oh, you seem surprised, mortals. Was it something I said, perhaps? The angel utters as now we see that not only is Myrno here, but a clone of himself has shown up as well. Vegeta ascends up in the air to the angel saying that this was unexpected, but he knew he was hiding something this entire time. So one of your powers is creating clones then. I'm sensing the exact same level of power from the both of you so this is not an illusion, Vegeta says, am I correct in saying this? My, as expected from someone as keen as you, Vegeta, the angel replies, certainly took you long enough but I have a suspicion you've been aware of this since we first met. Vegeta says that he knew he was up to something and he hides his power really well, but something has been off this whole time and this just confirms his suspicions, but now that they know this, they should fare better, right? Ha! <laughs> the angel replies, mortals, honestly. It doesn't matter either way because this isn't just a clone, but far different from what you think you know. My power is unlike anything you've ever encountered in your short lives. However, he goes on, if you are so curious as to what I can do, then allow me to show you a few things that you've yet to experience. The angel goes on to explain that the ability that they see before them allows him to duplicate himself an endless amount of times, all of equal powers and skills to the original with absolutely no strain on himself, all sharing the same mind as well. So even if one is fully destroyed, this would be an endless battle regardless, Boo says as Myrna confirms. This should come to no surprise to you, Majin, he says, directing his attention to Boo. You possess a similar ability, however mine is permanent and my duplicates all possess the ability of interdimensional travel and multiversal power. You are not fighting a copy, you're fighting me. Honestly, if I wanted to, I could launch an entire army of myself on the multiverse and there isn't a single thing you or anyone could do about it. This has been hopeless for you all from the very beginning. I just wanted to give you a bit of confidence for the time being and, as I expected, you all took the bait. Turning back to Majin Buu, he goes on to add that not only was he unsuccessful in eating him, but Myrtle was able to escape without them even realizing it very easily. 
If that were anyone else, then perhaps, yeah, that little trick of yours would have taken their life, and you all would be about your day right now. But I'm not just any opponent, so allow me to enlighten you on something. The angel raises his hand to reveal an oddly shaped crest. You may not have noticed, but this symbol on my hand previously only had four markings. Now it has five. If you all were as keen as you think, you would have picked up on something like this as it proves that in each encounter, you've been dealing with a different me. He goes on to further explain that even though they defeated his clone earlier, they didn't kill him. Instead, his crest was transferred to the rest of them, but the symbol and the true power behind it isn't quite ready yet, but soon enough. The more the crest completes, the stronger he becomes, and this has all been a part of his plan. Once the symbol is fully completed, there isn't a single thing anyone, living or dead, can do to stop me. My final goal is Zeno, but I don't mind toying with you all until I get to him. <laughs> Just how long until that symbol is complete then, Vegeta asks. Well, since you're so curious, I'll tell you that there are 13 pieces needed in order for the crest to be completed. Once that happens, and I meet Zeno, the game is over, he says. As to how all of this is going to happen, well, I guess you'll just have to wait and see. Right now, Myrno has 8 total pieces and his counterparts all have half of that, so he is very close to completing whatever this final goal of his is before confronting Zeno, as he says that he's actually been fighting them all very differently since the first time they fought. What a shame, Vegeta. You have such interesting raw and untapped potential. You would have been the absolute perfect destroyer, but instead you chose your pride and let it cloud your vision to the gift I could have given you. And then what do you do? You go and train with my father. But where did that get you, Vegeta? Not only do the three of you have no chance against me, he goes on to explain, but I am far stronger than my brothers and sisters, so neither Whis nor the rest of them will be able to destroy what I've become now. Now that Myrno has released this much information to the Z Fighters, Vegeta wonders just why he's chosen to put all of his cards on the table now. Is he really that cocky? Or is this also a part of his plan? With just the three of you, there's nothing to be afraid of, Myrno says, and I hate to admit it, but actually the only person who could really stand up to me right now is my father, and he hasn't had a serious battle in billions of years, so outside of him, you, the gods, and my siblings are nothing I can't handle on my own. Come to think of it, he says, and then his eyes light up with an idea. Vegeta, if you were actually able to do so, I honestly wouldn't mind dying by your hand. It would only help me anyway, but only if you can. Of course it won't be easy, especially for a mortal, he goes on, but I would accept this fate if you were the one to do it, Vegeta, so what do you say? Vegeta of course responds that he would love to be the first Saiyan to kill an angel. As long as I live to fight, you won't complete that crest angel, he says, as Boo and Frieza ready themselves as well. With the information Myrno presented everyone with in this chapter, it seems like the quicker they take him out, the better, but per his own words, the only one that can even stand up to him at this point is his own father, the Grand Priest. The powers that the angel will gain when the crest is complete is just as much as a mystery as the powers he possesses now, but from the sound of it, once it is finally complete, Myrno may transcend the very gods themselves, but he still finds interest in a mortal such as Vegeta. Whether this is more bait or not, Vegeta has once again been chosen by Myrno, but this time not for training. If there will be one to defeat the angel, it seems like he'll only accept it if it's Vegeta to be the one to kill him for some reason, after commenting on the amount of untapped power and potential he still possesses, and how he would make the ideal god if he had chosen that path. But still, Destroyer God or not, Vegeta is being looked at as the first Saiyan ever being worthy enough to take the life of an angel, and this is a challenge I don't think he would ever turn down. Having revealed some of his abilities such as portal manipulation and cloning himself, Myrno stands before his three opponents as he removes his cloak. Now then Majin, he says, I believe we have some unfinished business as he throws his cape to the ground. I warn you now, Angel. I'm only just getting started, Boo says, so don't get too cocky. Let's see if you're ready for this. Neo Wolf Fang Fist, he cries out, as Majin Buu takes a page out of Yamcha's book, who now resides within him as well, and charges at the Angel. Well now, this should be fun, and that name sounds pretty awesome too, the Angel says, as he barely moves, deflecting all of Buu's attacks. As the two clash, we take a moment to pan over to Frieza, who's spectating the battle, seething with rage over past events. 
They've only just begun and I've already grown sick of them, Frieza says as he lifts his finger into the air. The game is over for the lot of you now. Overhead, Frieza prepares a gigantic supernova death ball as he cries out, Angel or Majin, it makes no difference to me. I've grown very impatient of being made a fool of, so now you're all dead. I hope you're ready, he says. The battle between Myrno and Boo comes to a brief pause as the angel points above them and tells Boo that he may want to turn around because his friend looks a bit angry. Boo turns around with a pale face, almost as if he's seen a ghost, as he shrieks, Frieza, what are you doing? Are you completely out of your mind? Don't you dare launch that attack. It's far too late for negotiations, however. Not that Frieza would ever listen anyway, as he launches the attack directly down onto the earth below, completely obliterating Majin Buu and presumably Myrno, as Buu curses Frieza for being so reckless. Luckily for Buu, his regeneration abilities are far superior to those akin to it, so he's able to piece himself back together fairly quickly. However, not without being completely infuriated with Frieza. You moron, he says after rejoining the fight. Have you lost your mind? Why are you attacking your one ally in this battle? He questions him, reminding Frieza that whatever grudges he has with them doesn't matter right now. Their goal is to beat Myrno and that won't happen like this, to which Frieza simply replies, whoops, guess my finger slipped. Look, he says, I know who my enemy is and I know why I came here, but you were in my way so I suppose that that would just make you collateral damage and besides, you can regenerate yourself so what's the problem? As Frieza begins to fly off, he warns Majin Buu that he doesn't care what happens to them. If they're going to become a burden to him, then they're better off just getting lost now or risk being killed again, as he goes off to engage Myrno himself, leaving Buu seething with rage. Frieza clashes with the angel finally as he sets his revenge in motion for that humiliation he suffered in space at the beginning of the story, but Myrno isn't impressed. This is becoming very repetitive, he says, all of you fighting one by one with no hope of besting me. Shouldn't you be fighting together? That would be better for both sides. I'd rather die, Frieza says. I am more than enough by myself to defeat you, so I suggest that you focus on me and don't worry about them. But as he says this, a large amount of concentrated ki is felt above them as they all look to see Majin Buu preparing an attack directly overhead. Let's see you try and survive this, Buu screams, as once again he borrows a page from the Z Fighters book, this time Tien firing a Neo Tri-Beam, but his target isn't really what you'd expect. Majin Buu's attack hammers down on Frieza and Frieza alone as he yells, you idiot! That attack is headed straight for me, with Myrtle watching a confusion nearby as Frieza is pummeled by the Tri-Beams. Frieza reveals himself from the smoke and debris before long, extremely injured from that last attack as he curses Buu for completely missing and purposefully hitting him. Boo descends to him as he warns Frieza that he should tread more carefully next time in his actions. He says that he'll restore him this one time, but if he pulls another one of his stunts again, then Boo won't hesitate to destroy him before dealing with Myrno, as he raises his hand to Frieza and then fully restores his health. Now like I said, Boo continues, make sure not to get caught in any more of my attacks, and in the meantime, either assist us or stay out of the way. This is the only time I will tell you this, Frieza, and then he flies off back to the battlefield. Frieza boils with rage after being scolded like a child by Majin Buu as he swears to annihilate them the first chance he gets. Now then, Myrno says, as we cut back to he and Vegeta who's fighting the other clone of the angel, I've waited long enough, Vegeta. It's time for you to show me what you've trained for. I expect nothing but your best because I won't be holding back this time, he says. Now let's begin. I will admit, however, he starts off by saying that I do look forward to seeing what my father has been able to teach you, Vegeta. For a mortal such as yourself to have gained his respect is extremely rare, so this just confirms my suspicions of how special you are. However, I still want to see the full extent of your potential. Is that so, Vegeta says. You know, I find it funny that for a being who sits at the highest position, such as yourself, you sure do have a rebellious nature and don't seem to be as neutral as told. This is when Myrna, however, goes on to educate Vegeta that all beings, no matter who or what they are, have a nature of rebellion within them, especially if they feel like they've been wrong and are changed by those actions. Which reminds me, he goes on, have you ever even respected your own father? The king, before he died. I take it you didn't, but why would you? See, it's interesting to me that in this universe, he died by someone else's hand because in my native universe, universe 13 Vegeta, you were the one that killed your parents and you did so for your own selfish reasons. 
You murdered them to prove your superiority over your people and I take it that you probably would have done the same here had things worked out differently. This is what makes you different, Vegeta, he says, as Vegeta who still hasn't said a word looks sternly as Myrno speaks. This is what I like about you. You will do absolutely whatever it takes to get stronger. It's the quality I admire most about you because it's as I said before, you are the perfect warrior. Your judgment of reality is flawed though. Not many are willing to throw everything away to get ahead, but in this case, you have absolutely no chance against me, which is why you should remember the risk involved. So again, Vegeta, do you accept my test? It's been a few minutes since the Grand Priest and Whis were transported away by Myrno, and in this time, we suspect that they've begun making their way back, however the Angel's patience has run out, so Vegeta must fight now and the only way to survive this encounter is to be the first to defeat an Angel. While Myrno has accepted that if Vegeta is the one to defeat him then he would be satisfied with the outcome, the only thing Vegeta really has to believe in right now is the dream of becoming the first Saiyan ever to kill an Angel using whatever techniques and powers he's awakened while training with the father of the angels himself, the Grand Priest. As hopeless as it may seem, Vegeta has yet to back down from Myrno's challenge of being the first to slay an angel. With such confidence, Myrno sees no problem in revealing a hefty amount of his techniques. Oh, that reminds me, he states as he stands before Vegeta. I should inform you of a few things before we begin that I'm sure have been on your mind since our very first encounter. He sticks his hand out and creates a small portal in his palm. This isn't just some normal portal, he goes on. My portals don't just simply transfer matter from point A to point B. I could, in theory, teleport you to an entirely different planet or wherever I choose in the multiverse for that matter, but that wouldn't really be any fun. These portals can also transfer pure concentrated energy and particles as well, so if I wanted to, I could bring heat to a frozen planet or create life as I desire. Not only that, I can also manipulate this power into anything I want it to become and use it to create and destroy anything really. Such a power isn't easily taught nor could just anybody learn this skill without proper mind and body concentration. I know you've been wondering how I've been able to do everything I've been doing up until now and now you know. My power can completely destroy you Vegeta. I'm sure you remember what I did with your final flash. You didn't survive off of your own fortitude, I lowered its effects so you would survive, because I wanted you to. Otherwise you would have been long dead by your own attack so just remember these things. They aren't something to overlook so remember what's on the line here mortal. So what's the point in telling me all of this stuff anyway? What's your plan Vegeta demands? Well, the point is for you to know but to put it bluntly, the most powerful usage of all of these abilities is the absolute freedom to transfer energy from one being to another, no matter the person, even if they're total strangers. One could allow the other to become obscenely powerful or weak. The strong can always remain strong, while the weak can either die like worms or grow stronger by the host. These abilities are a gift, Vegeta. So far, I've done this with 13 universes in total, 12 being the ones that are here currently, and mine, which was wrongfully destroyed by Zeno which explains why my other clones are just as powerful and wise as the original. Do you get it now, Vegeta? You have no chance. However, he goes on, why don't you allow me to take you under my wing, Vegeta? I can grant you limitless power. I know how much you crave to be the absolute best. Just as I did with my own counterparts, I could allow you to become more powerful than you could possibly imagine, unmatched by gods and mortals alike. Oh, please, spare me the foolery. I absolutely refuse, Vegeta says, as we always knew he would, and Myrno as well. Well, that is a shame, Myrno goes on. This is why your counterpart from my own universe was much smarter in making optimal choices. You could have become the mightiest warrior in all of reality, Vegeta. How disappointing. This angers Vegeta, who has always been vocal about his Saiyan pride, as he clenches his fist, telling Myrno that he has no idea what the feeling of being beaten is like for a Saiyan. I'd rather die than commit to something that goes against my honor. My pride, he says. So the answer is a resounding no, Angel. I will beat you with my own power. I've shattered my limits before, on my own, and I will do it again if that's what it takes to beat you. Make no mistake. How very naive of you, Vegeta, Myrno goes on. Why choose to train with my father over and over again when you can gain such power tenfold instantly without having to put yourself through so much hardship? 
a power that no being in any plane of existence can touch at your whim, but you choose to put yourself through torture in order for a chance to get stronger. How pathetic. But Vegeta thinks exactly the opposite as he has something up his sleeve as well. You say it's pathetic of me to want to push myself the natural way, but you'll soon find out exactly what I mean when I show you my powers, Myrno, he says, as in the next panel. Vegeta's power explodes around him as his strength rises aggressively. Even Myrno praises Vegeta for having such impressive raw power. He isn't done yet, however, as his strength continues to skyrocket and his Saiyan pride explodes within him as he claims that he is the single strongest Saiyan to ever live. A new power has been awoken from all of the cumulative training and fighting Vegeta has gone through since meeting the gods as his aura emits a blinding light and when he appears next, Vegeta seems to have achieved the absolute highest level of a Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan form, perfected and polished beyond belief. Myrno looks on in awe as he states, wow, what amazing power Vegeta, this new strength of yours is far beyond what it ever was before, showing a new nervous look on his face for the first time. Traveling interdimensionally, Whis and the Grand Priest are spotted making their way across the multiverse in order to save Earth and Universe 7. However, a sharp spike in energy stops them in their tracks momentarily. I sense a great disturbance on Earth, the Grand Priest says. I also feel Vegeta's power rapidly rising as well. I do too, sir, Whis replies. We should arrive in about 10 more minutes. With Vegeta releasing such power as he is, he should be able to hold him off until we get there. I hope. However, this is when the gut-wrenching spike in Vegeta's power catches the both of them off guard, but this in turn means that Myrna will soon be releasing the extent of his power as well, so they pick up the pace the best they can. Welcome to the end of your life, Angel, Vegeta says as his massive aura consumes the entire battlefield. The angel looks on in absolute amusement as he begs Vegeta to show him what the strongest of the seventh universe can really do. Myrno makes the first move by creating a portal then punching through it as he warns Vegeta that, little by little, he will reveal the true extent of his powers as well. However, as his punches travel through the portal, Vegeta easily blocks all of them. And not only that, but Vegeta counterattacks faster than the angel can react using his own portal. And for the first time, Vegeta has made the Angel of Universe 13 Myrno bleed. Whether or not this new power Vegeta seems to have awakened is enough to defeat Myrno is a far-fetched hope, however it has allowed him to draw blood from an angel. With only a brief few days of training by the Grand Priest, Vegeta's abilities have already accelerated far beyond what they ever were before with refined skills alike, but how long is he able to maintain this form? as well as Myrno revealing the absolute extent of his power remaining to be seen. But one thing seems to be true so far though. Vegeta may be the first mortal in history to ever make an angel bleed. Vegeta charges forward bearing a striking resemblance to the same look he had when he faced Cell for the first time. Determined and vicious. Myrno, who's still reeling from Vegeta's last attack, is taken off guard by his follow-up as he moves at blazing speed continuing his onslaught. Vegeta is attacking with devastating force, sending Myrno soaring across the wasteland, continuing to chase him as he appears above the angel and with an absolutely vicious punch, crushes him into the ground below creating a massive crater. A matter of days was all it took under the Grand Priest for Vegeta to gain power like this which makes you wonder just what was the astronomical difference between his training and Whis's training. Vegeta's Saiyan rage has been set ablaze as he doesn't let up for even a second, charging into the crater after Myrno who we see is actually pretty beaten up at this point as he struggles to get back to his feet but the smile he cracks doesn't disappear as he says, why am I Vegeta? But all of a sudden, Vegeta appears in front of him grabbing him by his face telling him enough talking angel, as you said to me. Vegeta then goes on to crush the angel further into the crater at faster and faster speeds until within seconds, the two pierce right through the planet as Vegeta drags him by the face back and forth multiple times through the earth. I think it's a pretty fair assessment to say that we've never really seen Vegeta go just this absolutely berserk before with no regard for the planet itself, trashing the earth as he just obliterates the angel. When we come back to the surface however, Majin Buu and Frieza are looking on in disbelief at what they've just witnessed as well. Vegeta is going too far now, Buu comments. Just because nobody's left on the planet right now doesn't give him the right to just wreck the earth to prove some kind of point. 
We know he's strong. Who is literally trembling watching this battle as he continues, saying that Vegeta's really pushing it. Although he is beating Myrtle to a pulp right now, he's putting the entire Earth at risk of being fully destroyed. What's the matter with him? When we look back over to Vegeta, we can see him flying above the crater as he drops the angel into the seemingly bottomless pit for the entire time he's falling. Myrtle insists that Vegeta has absolutely amazed him. This is the true gift of the gods bestowed upon you, Myrtle says. Vegeta completely disregards Myrtle's comments as his only goal right now is to absolutely destroy his opponent as we see him raise his power even more, looking down on his opponent. Vegeta concentrates a vast majority of his energy into this next attack, as in a flash, he absolutely unloads a flurry of ultra-powerful key blasts down on Myrno. Things seem to be going in Vegeta's favor, however, when we look over, we see the other Myrno who is fighting Majin Buu spectating the battle, saying, that's right Vegeta, destroy the other Myrno for me. All a part of the plan. With Vegeta having relentlessly destroyed the most recent copy of Myrno, his plan to complete the Crescent has finally come true as we cut back to the Angel and see that on his hand, the remaining symbols have been filled in. At last, he says, the Crest is full. My full power has been restored, but with a slightly surprised look on his face, he still says that he didn't think Vegeta would be able to kill the other him that easily. Off in the immense vacuum of space stands the original Myrno as the information gathered from his doppelgangers is transferred back to him upon destruction. My plan is going exactly as expected, he says, looking off in the direction of the Earth. With the crest complete and my full power restored, I'll soon move into the second phase of my plan. Vegeta has improved so much in such a short amount of time, but in the end, it'll make no difference. He'll soon understand just where he stands in this game of mine. My, my. You sure know how to leave a lasting impression, Vegeta, Myrno says, as we cut back to Earth to see that the angel in his truest form has now ported himself back to planet Earth before Vegeta as we see him step out of his portal. You did exactly what I wanted you to, Saiyan. You've proven to me the growth of your power, he says, as we see Vegeta still gleaming with power, not looking fatigued in the slightest, even after that absolute rush of offensive strength. I was wrong about my old man, Myrno says. Turns out he actually can get something right from time to time. You all did exactly what I wanted. Remember when I told you I was only warming up here? Well, as a matter of fact, I was, and now that my full power has been restored, Vegeta, I'll show you, he goes on. But not here. I actually have a much better place in mind for us to continue this battle of ours. I don't want you to miss out at all on what I've been warning you about, so allow me to bring us to that place right now, Myrno says, as he lifts his finger into the air. It should be very entertaining. I do hope you're all ready for what's about to happen. I told you from the very beginning, you never really had a chance against me, and I'm about to prove it to you, he says, as he creates a massive portal, much bigger than we've seen him create up until this point, as Vegeta disappears inside. Myrno ends up dropping not only Vegeta, but Buu and Frieza as well, on top of this strange, desolate planet or moon-like mass somewhere deep in the outskirts of the universe. Now this is more like it, he says after they've all arrived. Here is where I spawned most of my clones. The silence of this place adds a very touching tone to the battle, don't you think? He says playfully. This is where we shall continue and ultimately conclude our battle once and for all. A place far beyond life itself. Do you feel it, gentlemen? The absolute emptiness of space echoing through your bodies. This should be fun. While finishing this battle once and for all with Vegeta who has shown ridiculous amounts of power falls in line with his plan as well, now that Myrno has completed the crest and regained his full powers, the odds are even more stacked against the Z Fighters without them having no idea what to expect and on top of that, Myrno has surely moved them much further away from Whis and the Grand Priest who as we remember, were also on their way back to Earth to help out as well. Although I will admit, Myrno goes on, I enjoy losing myself out here among the stars sometimes. Something about it I find very settling. A perfect place to just sit out here and reflect on what true beauty is among the silence. You seem like such a happy person, Boo says. Fighting the three of us surely won't be easy, even for you, and you have to know that. Myrno then turns his attention to Boo, saying, Huh, now that you mention it, I do see my error, he says. I accidentally brought along the two of you with Vegeta as well. No matter, I'll just correct it right now. Hold still, he says, as he lifts his hand to Boo and Frieza. This will only take a second. I intend to do this alone. 
he raises Frieza and Majin Buu into the air just out of their range, telling him that they can just sit up there and watch as he battles and kills Vegito. Not if we have anything to say about it, Buu says as he charges Murno. We're done playing your stupid games, but as Buu flies closer to them, he smacks against some kind of barrier. What the? What is this, he says, pressing up against whatever this invisible force is. Is this some kind of shield? He's keeping us out on purpose as Frieza comments you've got to be joking now. Of course you lack the power to break through, Frieza says as he raises his hand. Stand aside Majin, let me show you how it's done as Frieza releases a massive energy wave in the direction of the invisible barrier, but when the smoke clears, absolutely nothing has changed. To both Frieza and Boo's surprise, the barrier is still completely unharmed as far as they can tell at least, and they still can't get through it. Not even a scratch, Boo grunts. There's gotta be some way inside. You idiots can't do anything to destroy that, so don't even bother trying, Murno says, as he comments that he made sure to reinforce that barrier especially for them to never be able to pierce it, specifically Majin Buu with his endless tricks, so they can try as they like, but they'll only exhaust themselves before their inevitable demise. Murno turns his attention finally back to Vegeta as he says that now that there isn't anyone to disturb or get in our way, let's continue. I've long awaited for this, Vegeta, you truly are impressive. But your time is up, mortal. I must admit that you have become far more powerful since we first met, he goes on. So strong, in fact, that I know you aren't like those two idiots up there. You won't use any dirty tricks or schemes to beat me, Vegeta. Just raw power and ambition. You are absolutely a one-of-a-kind, once-in-a-lifetime warrior. I must give you that much. Now what do you say, Vegeta? Let's finish this, he says, as they both assume their stances, but there can only be one to leave this planet, as the greatest fight of Vegeta's life commences with his newfound powers. The final match between Murno and Vegeta is finally coming to a climax, but Murno has one final stipulation he wishes to input before they begin. In true warrior, almost gladiator-like fashion, Murno insists that they should settle this with a death battle using only their limbs. No cheap tricks, no explosions, no huge beams. Just a one-on-one -on -one hand to hand combat match. A death battle using only our limbs, Vegeta exclaims. It sounds to me like you want to be grinded into the dirt. Well I accept, he goes on. Now let's go Angel, as the final round officially begins with Myrno looking to break one of the most single important codes of the angels by using his full power against Vegeta. It's at a time like this that we finally cut back to Goku who's still in this mysterious dimension after presumably being sent here on accident by the angel, however we haven't gotten to see much of what he's been up to. Aside from knowing that he's also in training, but his progression has been much more in the shadows ironically. The elderly looking Omni King whom Goku ran into while trying to escape from this place has taken it upon himself to train Goku and to no surprise, he says that Goku has come a very long way since they began, but his body is beginning to give. The clone of Myrna whom Goku has been training with this whole time stands over him as he says, I gotta hand it to you Goku, you're a lot tougher than you look, but this battle is over now. Myrna goes on to tell Goku who looks in no shape to keep fighting, that he shouldn't have to say this, however he doesn't want to kill Goku, but if he keeps going on like this then he'll die regardless. If I were you, I'd give up and throw in the towel, you can't win he says. Goku assures him that he isn't even close to finish and even if he can barely stand, he'll find a way to overcome this just like everything else. Now let's continue, Goku says. The barrier encasing Myrno and Vegeta, or rather keeping out Majin Buu and Frieza, has quickly become bothersome for the latter, not only being invincible but seemingly impenetrable as well. Stand back, Majin Buu shouts as he releases an enormous Kamehameha wave at the barrier, but it doesn't even make a scratch, just like the previous attacks. But Boo doesn't give up and he vows to find another way. Oh please, you're only making a fool of yourself, Frieza remarks, as he tells Boo, if our strongest attacks won't work then what makes you think anything else will, you idiot? It's at that exact moment though, that a clear shatter rips across a small part of the barrier near Frieza, shocking the both of them seeing as how they didn't touch it at all. Wait, a crack, Boo says? But how? Could this have been from our other attack somehow, or is this something different? We didn't even do anything this time, yet the shield cracked on his own. This couldn't be another one of Myrno's tricks. That's gotta be it though, he goes on. The results from our past attacks have to have caused this. 
No, you moron, Frieza cuts in. It couldn't be your attack because you attacked from a completely different direction. Once again, after Frieza speaks, yet another crack presents itself across the barrier and this is when they start to realize some things. Wait, Frieza says. It isn't our attacks causing this. And then he gets an idea. Hey, break you stupid shield, Frieza yells at the barrier suddenly looking a bit crazy to say the least, but when the shield cracks again, Boo realizes that it's actually their insults causing the cracks and not their attacks. Now this isn't the first time we've seen this kind of thing in Dragon Ball, the two situations that automatically come to mind for me being PyCon and the Universe 6 tournament, so a spell of this caliber is definitely possible. Boo goes on to follow Frieza's lead now that they've solved Myrno's little game and begins yelling his own insults at the barrier to test the theory. When the barrier cracks further, Boo implores Frieza to come help him, but Frieza changes his mind and insists Boo is doing just fine on his own, refusing to humiliate himself even further. Frieza's pettiness at a time like this infuriates Boo as he yells, you useless bald idiot. This shatters a large chunk of the shield funnily enough to Boo's delight, but Frieza doesn't find it so funny being made a fool of as a tool right now. The two start getting in a shouting match back and forth, calling each other every name in the book, as we see the shield beginning to crumble under the weight of their words, and if they keep this up, they'll probably be in in no time. Once again, you've lost, Goku. This is pointless, Myrtle says as we cut back to the realm of emptiness where Goku currently is. You could never destroy what I am, the angel says, so I encourage you to just give up and accept reality. If you continue to push yourself like this, you will be killed. You're missing something, Goku. Goku cuts him off, however, still with fire in his voice, but he looks absolutely horrible and is trembling just trying to stand right now. Then I'd rather die, he says. I'll do whatever it takes to get stronger to beat you. My body may break, but you could never destroy my will, so let's keep going. I see, Myrna replies, that I have just the thing for you. You see, he goes on, now holding out his hand and revealing a small portal he created. This whole time I live by my own order and not the order of someone else. I carry out the will of my own actions how I choose, but the power you seek, Goku, is not such an action and can't just be given to anyone. Why do you not choose to just simply use the Dragon Balls to help you achieve such limitless potential? They would allow you to achieve power far greater than anything you're capable of on your own, surely. Any other mortal in your shoes would surely see this as the best choice you can make and wouldn't hesitate. So now it seems that Myrna was growing impatient or rather testing Goku's resolve, tempting him with the Dragon Balls in order to sort of cheat his way to this newfound power. As great as that sounds, Myrna, Goku says, that'd be taking the easy way out and that's not what real strength or power are. I push myself beyond my limits and it's only made me stronger as time goes on, so I refuse. Gifted power isn't something handed over with a simple wish, it's something earned through pushing yourself, Goku goes on, as he continues to deny that power obtained in such a way isn't an option. Well, what a shame, Myrna replies. However, Goku, I will say that I am intrigued by your hunger to improve. You limit yourself, however. Maybe this will wake you up a bit more, Myrna says. I want you to pay very close attention to what I'm about to do, Goku. Don't forget what you're fighting for, mortal. And then he snaps his fingers, revealing something that makes Goku's blood run absolutely cold. In each of his hands, Myrna holds portals showing both Goku's wife Chi Chi and his baby granddaughter Pan. The lives of the ones you love most, Goku, Myrna says. In one portal, your wife, and in the other, your granddaughter. Take a good look. How far are you willing to go? Myrno has taken things to another level now, dangling the lives of Goku's loved ones over his head like some sort of trophy, sparking a newfound rage in the sand. Leave them out of this, Myrno, he yells. Whatever you're planning, you better not touch them. Oh, shut up, Saiyan, the angel replies. This is only a simple game and one that you have all of the say in, technically. You see, you can save one or both of them, but he goes on, only if you can answer a few questions of mine first. I distinctly remember telling you when we first met that you have much to learn before you can ever stand before me in a serious battle, and while you have grown, you are still no particular match and lack many things. However, listen to me closely, Saiyan. If you refuse to answer any of my questions, then either one of them, or perhaps even both, 
will be permanently erased from existence. The choice is yours, Goku. The Angel's sadistic game doesn't stop here, however, as he says that even if Goku does fail and both Pan and Chi-Chi are destroyed, then he'll just keep doing the same thing to two more people until Goku can start progressing better through this game. But it will continue until there isn't anyone left for Goku to save. So let's see just how much you're willing to endure. Now let's begin, Goku. Goku is seething with rage at being tormented by Myrna for pure sport it seems, but now he's involving the lives of his innocent loved ones, further setting him off the edge. Myrna, however, reminds him that his anger is a bit misplaced and rather, if he wanted to place the blame on someone, he should place it on him, as he points to the elderly Omni King. It was his idea to begin with, the angel goes on. I could easily kill you right now, but that wouldn't be any fun. I'd like for you to struggle a bit since you like earning things. Now, he says, raising both of his hands in the air, revealing the portal showing Pan and Chi Chi once again. Here is your first question, Goku. Goku absolutely loses it when Myrtle presents his family in front of him again, knowing that one or possibly both of them could be in a race soon, as he shouts, No! Stop! Leave my family out of this! And at this point, Goku snaps. The silver hair, the white aura, the piercing eyes, Myrtle's sick game and toying with the very existence of Goku's loved ones has pushed him far beyond his breaking point as he transforms into Mastered Ultra Instinct, reaching the farthest peaks of his potential. Although Vegeta's new power has proven to be a phenomenon we've never seen before, after the crescent mark was completed for Myrtle thanks to Vegeta, things have drastically changed in an instant. Well, this is fun saying, isn't it? Myrtle asks as he continues to dominate Vegeta, pushing him back with every single punch and kick connected. I... I can't believe this, Vegeta exclaims, barely able to shield himself from this barrage of attacks. There's no way I can predict his movements. His power is absurd. And it feels like he's slowly picking up the pace even. Vegeta is being absolutely shut down by Myrtle now that his full power has been released, but the drastic gap, even as strong as Myrtle was before, no one could have expected this. He's polished his skills to the point that his fighting style doesn't have any openings. All the while smiling at me. What kind of joke does he take me for, Vegeta exclaims. We then cut back to the Grand Priest and Whis finally, who are still traveling interdimensionally to meet back up with Vegeta. The Grand Priest goes on to comment that he feels a great disturbance with Myrno, as he asks Whis just about how much longer until they arrive, fearing that Myrno is about to finally use his full power. I can also sense Vegeta's energy fading rapidly, he says. We must hurry. I don't think he'll last much longer at this rate. There was a sudden change in locations, Whis says. Myrtle must have moved he and Vegeta off to a distant planet far from the Earth to make us take longer. If I'm right, we should be there in about one minute. I can feel his powers increasing by the second. Vegeta continues to be bashed around by the angel without much he can do about it, as the power gap is truly astronomical at this point. What's the matter, Vegeta? I thought you were in control, he says, mocking him. How about I show you even more power, he says, knocking Vegeta into the air, and what he does next is unleash a gigantic energy wave into the sky that wisps around the entire inside of the barrier that Myrtle is encased him in completely disregarding any deal they had of a fair fight with only their hands in the previous chapters. The blast hurdles towards Vegeta as Myrtle tells him, Welcome to the end of your life, Saiyan, as the massive explosion seems to engulf Vegeta. But all of a sudden, this is when we see Whis and the Grand Priest finally arrive on the strange planet Myrtle has been taking refuge at. So this is it, the Grand Priest says, as Whis asks, Shall we shatter the barrier and make our way into the battle? Wait, what are those two doing over there, Whis says, taking a note of Boo and Frieza who are still throwing insults at the barrier, slowly chipping away at it verbally. Wow, Whis says as they approach the two. It seems that you all went through with your plan to fuse after all. Impressive. Are you trying to break through this barrier as well? This is when Boo explains to them that they've been at it for a while, but the progress is just extremely slow and Vegeta has already started fighting. The insults are working, but not fast enough for them to get inside before it's too late. Well, you'll never get through by shouting insults like that, Whis replies. You're only prolonging the destruction. You have to give it everything you have and put your all into what you say, or else it's useless. Observe, he says, 
as strangely for the first time we can see we sort of break character as he screams you are the absolute worst you suck Myrno at the barrier well well mortal it looks like you finally did it a voice says as we see the outlining of a portal in a different realm we find ourselves once again in the realm of the unknown with time quickly running out for Vegeta however Goku has shattered a once thought to be impossible barrier of his own. And here I thought you were doomed to lose everything, Murno says, as we see him standing across from Goku who, although extremely beaten, has been, for lack of better words, reborn. You completed it. I'm amazed, Goku, he says, as we then cut to see that Goku has achieved the unthinkable. In order to save his friends and family, Goku was forced to summon the strength of Master Ultra Instinct. Without you even knowing that you tapped into it, I might add, Myrno goes on, it's quite rare that a mortal obtains a power that not even the gods can. Now I truly see who the strongest of the seventh universe is. But it is still nothing I can't handle. Goku is shocked at his own transformation and actually confused on how he's in this state of Ultra Instinct of all things. You were left no choice, Goku, the Elder Omni King cuts in to say. When you were left with no other options, your mind and body merged as one when you knew your physical abilities weren't enough. It was as I told you before, there is much to learn and unlike before, you should be able to maintain this form even longer now. Such a power however is still not permanent though, at least for you that is mortal. However you have grown infinitely stronger since you first came here. Now is the time Saiyan. While you were here, he continues, you were able to learn a great deal about Myrno's portals which is how you saved your family along with Ultra Instinct. So with the ability you now possess to create such things, you should be able to leave this place. However, the real Myrno will still be a much more difficult opponent for you than anything you've ever faced before. Even with Ultra Instinct Goku, he won't be defeated easily. This may be the last time we meet the old man tells Goku. Just remember what I've told you here and what you've learned in this place. If you begin to doubt yourself in any way in this battle, then you've already lost. To which Goku replies that he'll hold everything he experienced and learned here near, and before he's sent off to head to the battlefield, he's also given a fresh new gi. I wish you well Kakarot, the old man says, bidding farewell to Goku. A new and improved Goku, a far more powerful Goku. If you still can't figure things out, come back here at any time. I promise to do my very best with this new power, Goku tells him, as he shows that he's picked up one of Myrno's techniques while training here and creates a portal of his own, looking to arrive shortly after Whis and the Grand Priest. Thanks a ton for helping me out, old man, Goku says. Now, it's time to finally settle the score with Myrno once and for all, as Master Ultra Instinct Goku sets off to join Vegeta in the final battle against the most powerful opponent they've ever had the displeasure of meeting. As Vegeta lay motionless on the ground from the previous onslaught by the newly fully powered Murno, he goes on about how absolutely insane the jump in power was by the angel. Well Vegeta, is that it? Murno asks. What happened to all of that power and confidence from before? Jeez, and here I thought my old man finally did something right for once. I told you from the beginning you had no chance, do you see now? Myrno then, finally fed up with Vegeta's actions, begins screaming at him as he tells him, You had so much potential, Vegeta. I saw great things within you and you could have easily become the most powerful warrior which you so desire and a great rival for me. You were supposed to be the perfect destroyer. Instead, you took me for a fool and blinded by your own ego led you straight to my father. You overlooked what was right in front of you and how did that pay off for you? Now look at you, he continues, lying on the ground barely able to move. This would have never happened had you taken my offer, but now, this will be your grave, mortal, and you have no one to blame but yourself. How pathetic. Well, the time has come for us to finish up our little game, Vegeta. You won't be alone, however, Myrno says as he creates another portal next to him and reaches inside. Which one of your loved ones will be joining you, Vegeta, hmm? Maybe Boma. Or shall it be that baby, Bra? Or maybe Trunks, even? Let's just see who I end up pulling out of this portal. This was all you're doing, Vegeta. Restoring my powers was also a part of my plan all along and you fell for it. Vegeta rides on the ground unable to do a thing as his family will soon start being slaughtered right in front of him. 
But from the very portal Myrno just stuck his hand into, another hand grabs his wrist from the other side. Myrno's jaw drops as from the other side of the portal, mastered Ultra Instinct Goku has shown himself from somehow linking the two. Looking for something, Myrno? Goku says, looking the angel directly in the eyes as he tightens his grip. You won't be hurting anyone's families now that I'm here. Wait, you again? Myrno shrieks. How are you here? How did you escape and how did you find me here? He asks, utterly confused at what's going on now. So Kakarot, you did find us, Vegeta says, barely able to sit up even. Wait a second, that form, this power I'm feeling, did that clown really master Ultra Instinct? His energy is completely different than it's ever been. Darn him. How did you escape, Mortal? Myrno says, still in shock as now Goku has stepped through the portal and is on the same planet as him. And this, this form, he goes on. You've tapped into Ultra Instinct again, haven't you? How? You couldn't have done any of this alone. Explain. Goku ignores him, however, as he starts towards Vegeta, standing over his friend now. Wow, you've gotten a ton stronger since we last fought at Beerus' place, Vegeta. I'm impressed. Of course this makes Vegeta's blood boil, as to him, this is all condescending and not sincere as Goku is meant to be, as he tells him, Psst, you're one to talk, Kakarot. Just what kind of training have you been up to this time in order to pull this off? And with who? More importantly though, is this form a permanent thing now or not? We kinda need it. Wait, now I see, Myrno says, as it looks like he's finally realizing what's happening here. He's been training with another version of me if he's able to find me this way. Now it all makes sense. How dare you interrupt our battle, Saiyan, Myrno says, now directing his attention back to the matter at hand. I see you haven't learned as well. So be it, you will soon be dealt with as well. Whether you've mastered Ultra Instinct, trained with the Grand Priest, I'm telling you all for the last time, none of it matters. My power has been restored and the two of you are child's play to me. My power is far superior to that of Ultra Instinct, so don't get ahead of yourself, Goku. Vegeta can barely stand, so what hope do you think you have against me? Let this be our final battle, gentlemen, Myrno says. I have other matters to attend to after I'm done here, so who would like to die first? Shall I finish you off, Vegeta, or would you like to see me slaughter your friend first? Vegeta stumbles to his feet, still extremely weakened from the last battle, but his pride pushes him on. I don't care if you have Ultra Instinct or not, he says. I will not let you overshadow me again. I've done far too much to let you surpass me again, Kakarot. I'm finishing him now. Don't you dare get in my way, he roars, as Vegeta's power erupts back to life with him taking on that mystical Super Saiyan Blue form he was in prior. He's taken everything from me, Vegeta shouts. He mocked my pride and used my own family against me. He will die by my hand, Kakarot. Whoa, Vegeta, calm down, Goku says. And where did you get this form from? Never mind that, I understand how you feel, trust me. He did the same thing to me when I was trapped in this weird place before I got here. It doesn't matter, Kakarot. He's mine to finish and I will be the one to destroy him, Vegeta says, as his power continues to rage on. There is nothing left to say at this point. He will not leave this planet alive. Now stand aside and do not interfere in our battle. My, my, you seem very bothered all of a sudden, Vegeta, Myrno says, now seeming to have calmed back down a bit himself. So bothered, in fact, that it caused your power to resurface. How wonderful. However, fighting you alone would be no fun at this point anymore. I welcome the both of you to fight me together, he says with a smug look on his face. That way I can just go ahead and kill the both of you at the same time as well. It should be fun to see the two of you try your hardest only to fail in the end. You want to face both of us at the same time? Sounds like you have a death wish, Angel, Goku says. Well, what do you say, Vegeta? Let's team up one last time. Whatever, just don't get in my way, Kakarot, Vegeta scoffs. He will die by my hand. There's that senseless arrogance of yours again, Vegeta, Myrno says, cutting in. It will be your downfall. Now, show me what the both of you can do, Myrno says, as he assumes his stance. Ready whenever you are. We will crush you, Myrno, Vegeta says, as he and Goku assume their stances as well, with both of them at their full power. Try this out, Angel, Goku shouts, as he makes the first attack, firing a limit breaker Kamehameha at Myrno. 
The angel, however, doesn't bat an eye as he simply sticks his hand out in front of him, creating a portal to zap away the attack. How boring of you, Goku, he says as the portal engulfs the Kamehameha and is then redirected coming out behind Goku. Yeah, not this time, Murno, Goku says, however, as he creates a portal as well, absorbing his own attack, completely taking Murno off guard. Wait, he's using my portals? But how? Murno says, however, before he can get his thoughts together, Goku's attack comes back for a second time, this time inches away from obliterating the angel, however, barely missing him. Curse you, mortal, Murno says, as he barely dodges the attack. However, he's not safe just yet. How on earth did that rat learn to use my portals, Murno says, angry now that his abilities have been stolen by a mortal. I'm not done with you, Angel, a voice cuts in, as Murno looks up and now sees Vegeta charging straight towards him. Murno dodges Vegeta's attack as he comments how superior he still is to them, but gets cut off by a fist connecting with his cheek as we see Goku once again using his new portal technique, this time landing a direct hit. Heh, <laughs> looks like that one hurt a little bit, huh, Goku smirks. You pathetic Saiyans, Murno shouts, now truly angry that he's been struck. I'll show you who's in control. I will show you true pain if you think that this is a game now. Now die, Murno shouts, as he fires a flurry of powerful blast through dozens upon dozens of portals creating a complete rain shower of attacks down on Goku and Vegeta. He even mixes in punches and kicks as well through all of the portals, locking the Saiyans down to nothing but defense as Goku creates as many portals as fast as he can to deflect the attacks, while Vegeta can only block and dodge. Now this is what I've been looking for, Murno says, now with an almost psychotic look in his eyes. This is just wonderful, you two are absolutely deadly together, he says, almost gawking over the battle that they're having. When we cut back to Whis, he looks as if he's seen a ghost as he says, in all my years of knowing my brother, I have never seen him have this much fun in battle before. With anyone. It's almost alarming. Something isn't right here, he says. Tired already, you two? What a letdown. Sheesh, Murno says as he looks even more eager to keep battling them now. However, Goku and Vegeta continue to be pushed to their limits by the angel as every time they get an edge, he seems to respond tenfold. Hey, is it me? Or is this guy getting stronger and stronger as we fight? Goku asks, as we see he and Vegeta once again badly beaten, but forced to still stand against this seemingly all-powerful being. Blast. I feel it too, Kakarot, Vegeta says. What exactly is going on here? How does he keep getting the edge? So it seems like not only is something fishy going on with Murno and his constant comeback factor, after it looks like Goku and Vegeta have somewhat of an upper hand, but Whis observes that it almost looks like Murno is having a little too much fun with his battle, and against mortals at that which is very odd considering the depth of his powers and him being an angel. Something isn't right here and Whis and the Grand Priest know it. However, the barrier is still separating them from the battle while Goku and Vegeta only have a little time left before they reach their limits again as well against a growing immortal's power, even with Goku's new technique. Things are heating up extremely quickly in the battle on Murno's planet as both Goku and Vegeta are now in the fight and with Goku's new ability of creating portals identical to the angels, they seem to have an unexpected edge now. So what's it gonna be, Saiyans, Murno says in a mocking tone. That's not all you got, is it? But Vegeta and Goku are far from done as they give each other the same suggestive look, already knowing what the other is thinking. They both dash straight towards Murno, who doesn't seem to know just what they're doing at first, but his face quickly turns to shock once he realizes that Goku is actually creating a portal directly in between he and Vegeta that they both slip into before making contact with Murno, and then they disappear. Vegeta appears above Murno's head, sending him flying towards the ground, saying you should have never placed yourself in this situation, Angel. Now, you're gonna pay for everything you've done, Goku roars as he appears beside Murno, catching him with a kick that knocks him back. He regains his balance fairly quickly, but instead of worrying, Murno looks more excited and amused than ever before. That was great, guys. That's exactly how you do it. Amazing, he says, but Vegeta has far since lost his patience with the angel, as he even seems to overtake Goku's efforts in the battle as well, now charging Murno with a full head of steam on his own. I'll make you eat every word you've spoken to me, Vegeta says. I don't care what you are. 
Myrtle's smile continues to grow with each passing second in their battle as he tells Vegeta then why don't you try and make it? Vegeta makes a beeline towards Myrno and cracks him with a massive punch with the angel returning one as well but Vegeta refuses to falter as they both get blown back from the attacks. My, such anger Vegeta, Myrno taunts, are you feeling okay? As they both get back to their feet, Myrno comments how Vegeta's last attack was far too weak and that he could never truly hope to defeat him with that power. If you stop short like that again, you don't have any chance of winning. Come on now, Vegeta. Hit me with everything you've got. Use your full power. I'll even stand still for you, he goes on. But this patronizing has gone on long enough for Vegeta as he starts shaking with rage. How dare you, he says. And then he charges Myrno again as he says, how dare you make a fool out of me? I swear, I will grind you into dust myself. What happened to you killing me? Not as easy to win as you thought, huh, Angel? Now try this on, Vegeta says, as he punches Myrno with all of his might, just as he was instructed to, with Myrno standing there not even attempting to dodge. Not bad, Vegeta, he says, still smirking. Now it's my turn, though. Myrno returns the favor, punching Vegeta with just as much force as he did, knocking him into the sky. How is he still able to continue after all of this, Vegeta says to himself, which Myrno simply replies, I'm better than you, Vegeta. But this isn't over, it's your turn now, as Myrno seems to literally be treating this as some kind of one-up contest now. I hate you, Vegeta erupts. Sooner or later, you will break. I'll do whatever I have to do in order to crush you. I'm only just getting started, Angel, as Vegeta seems to have gone berserk with determination, wanting nothing more than to wipe Myrno from the face of existence himself without the Grand Priest or even Goku at this point. He throws another vicious punch, knocking Myrno back, but he returns with another equally powerful attack. This rage of yours is the fuel to your power, Vegeta, Myrno says. I admire that about you. Use it. Use the full resources of your Saiyan power. And do be sure to remember exactly what's on the line here. I don't care what you think, Angel, Vegeta responds, now with a sort of newfound confidence after his recent exchanges with Myrno. You can never destroy what I've become now. I won't stop until you are dead at my feet by my own hand. Ha. <sighs> well, we'll see, Vegeta, Myrno says laughingly, still overly enjoying this battle, catching Vegeta a tad off guard with his joking attitude, but he would love nothing more than to wipe that grin off of his face. Whoa. What an incredible battle, Goku says, now that he can only overlook the fight at this point that it seems to have been completely taken over by Vegeta who does have a sort of personal grudge with the angel as of now, after everything that's happened. Vegeta is better and stronger than ever now, Goku goes on, but so is Myrno. The level these two are on is insane, how wild. I want you to give it everything you've got with this next attack, Vegeta. Hit me with your absolute best, Myrno says, mocking him again, but Vegeta is happy to oblige as he gets into his stance for this final assault, telling Myrno, you're right where I want you, Angel. Just stay right there. Both Myrno and Vegeta clash with their maximum power, but Vegeta, however, is driven by much more than just the love of battle at this point, as their battle causes a colossal explosion in space, sending the both of them flying opposite directions. How absolutely incredible, Myrno says, now lying on his back in the crater created by their collision. I would have never expected for this to be the outcome. I can't remember the last time I had this much fun in a fight, he says, now gazing at the stars overhead. Warriors of the seventh universe, huh? What truly fascinating creatures they are. Their ambition, their determination, all of these factors are truly admirable and they possess unbelievable power and great potential. This is single-handedly the greatest entertainment I've ever had, he says, with that smile still never having left his face. If only we could do this forever, he says, still gazing at the skies. It's a shame these creatures have to die. Otherwise, I would fight them until the end of time myself. But I guess this is the end. Isn't that right, father? Myrno says, as above him, the Grand Priest and Whis have finally infiltrated the barrier along with Boo and Frieza. It's over, Myrno. You failed. And now, you will face final judgment, the Grand Priest says as he descends upon the planet. 
However, with one final act to this battle, things may not necessarily be over yet, as Myrno's true goal is still the Omni King. How incredible. Such power, Myrno says, looking into the stars. It truly is a shame that you all must die. I wish I could fight them forever, he says. But this seems to be the end now. Right, father? He says as the Grand Priest and Whis descend upon the now weakened angel. What a mess you've made, the Grand Priest says as Whis, Majin Buu, and Frieza land behind him. But you have failed, Myrno. And now, you face judgment. Well, I didn't expect for you to shatter my barrier so easily, Grand Priest, Myrno says. And you arrived here much faster than I anticipated as well, he continues as he tries to sit up. You have single-handedly thrown the entire order of things off balance ever since your return, the Grand Priest says. Your actions cannot be ignored as you have violated every single rule placed upon you as an angel. Your actions have caused immense chaos in the seventh and cannot be accepted. It's time, Myrno. The Grand Priest seems to be beyond fed up with the actions of his son as his plan was not only blasphemous, but everything he's done up until now has pretty much solidified his judgement in the face of the Omni King when the time comes. However, being that he is the father of the angels, the Grand Priest shows some compassion to Myrno as he tells him, if he is however able to show remorse for his actions, then leniency may be extended upon him. You expect me to feel bad for doing what I felt was right, Myrno says. Is this really the high and mighty Grand Priest standing before me right now? You have never shown leniency or mercy to anyone before. Especially to me when I needed it most from you, and now you just expect me to bow to you in the Omni King's will after what you've done to me? Don't make me laugh, he says. The Grand Priest continues to show compassion for Myrna, however, as he tells him, I will not judge you for your actions, right or wrong, good or evil. I will forgive you for your mistakes so long as you're willing to accept the things you've done and your fate. However, the final judgment lies solely in the hands of the Omni King, but you can change that. Of course he would, Myrna replies, talking about the Grand Priest. How typical of you, taking orders from that childlike creature? What an absolute shame it is. I'll never understand why we are bound to such things. You say you choose to forgive me but leave my fate ultimately in the hands of the Omni King? I think I'll pass. Myrna then turns his attention to Whis and asks a very ominous question. Say, Whis, he starts, do you care about your friends? Vegeta and the others, based on your actions, I think it's fair to say that you do. So tell me, how would you react if I, the Grand Priest's own son, were to destroy him? Would you care, he asks, but something isn't right here. These questions have a much darker meaning behind them. If I were to destroy the Grand Priest right now, would that matter more to you than the lives of the others? Surely, knowing you, you wouldn't feel bad, right? How about if he and everyone else here were destroyed in an instant? Similar to the actions of King Vegeta from my own universe, he goes on, recalling the actions of the Vegeta from his universe slaying his family for his own personal gain. Whis, however, stands firmly before him, not falling for any more of Myrno's games, as he responds, and why would you want to know something like that, brother? It doesn't matter what is done, Whis responds. Everything is done by the will of the Omni King, no matter the decision or cause. And this is also true for you, Myrno. Your fate will be up to him to decide now. Vegeta, still exhausted and injured from the battle, has been listening the whole time as he stands to his feet now, but he also feels something amiss here. I should have expected such an answer from you, Myrno replies. You're such an adult, Whis. Always being a good child to the Grand Priest, but you have always been annoying to deal with. It really is a shame that things have come to this. For everything you've done, the Grand Priest cuts in, you will pay for your blasphemies. You're not even supposed to exist right now. This will all be dealt with shortly. You are left with no other options, Myrno, he continues. You surely have no chance at fighting all of us together either, so it would be pointless to even try. This is where your journey will come to a decisive end. Oh? But... Who said I was finished, Myrna replies, as he begins to glow with a very sinister aura emitting from his body that begins to come bigger and brighter by the second. As tempting as all of this was, gentlemen, I have other plans to attend to, Myrna says. Can you feel it? 
he asked in a very sinister tone. I'll tell you all this much. If you were to go before that brat Zeno right now, then I don't very much like your odds. Did you really think this was over? As fun as all of this was, I do have other things I must finish so this game of ours isn't over quite yet. And it's at this moment that the aura emitting from Myrno becomes overwhelming which, right now, could only mean one thing. What? No, we shouts, as he realizes what's going on before it's too late. Everyone, quickly surround me at once. We have only seconds to spare. Myrno is going to self-destruct, he says. With no time to spare to save themselves, Goku, Vegeta, and even the Grand Priest take shelter behind the barrier created by Whis, as they can do nothing but watch as Myrno sets himself ablaze, taking the entire planet and all of his surroundings with him. But his final words seem to be the most ominous of all. We will not go quietly into the night, Myrno recites, as a galactic level explosion consumes this side of space, but almost as quickly as it started, the explosion dies, leaving nothingness all around them. How could he, Whis exclaims, for the first time ever looking visibly shaken. He chose to take his own life rather than risk being erased by the Omni King. The story of Myrno, the former angel of Universe 13, child of the Grand Priest and brother of Whis, ends in a way none of our warriors could have seen coming, but for Myrno, his hatred for the Omni King extended far beyond what they could understand at first and he would never give Zeno the satisfaction of finally erasing him so he chose to take his own life instead. When things calm down, Majin Buu approaches the Grand Priest and comments that Myrno was a vicious opponent. However, this feeling still lingers in them that maybe Myrno really wasn't bad. Something felt off about him the entire time, Buu says. It's like Dende said before. When Myrno came to the lookout, none of us were able to pick up on any wicked or negative energy about him and, to our knowledge, he didn't actually kill anyone, but could have whenever he wanted to, so why didn't he? Why hesitate when he knew he could win at any time? A good question indeed, as the Grand Priest also confirms that he couldn't read Myrno's true emotions either, which is why this situation was so alarming because angels are instructed to always remain neutral, no matter what the situation may be unless directly ordered by the Omni King himself. However, Myrno seems to truly be gone this time, he says. I don't sense his life force at all anymore. His hatred and lust for vengeance truly blinded him and in the end, it led him to his own death. It's still strange though, Goku comments. I remember when one of his clones mentioned something about freedom, but I never really understood what he meant by that. He seemed to always have some sort of weird coded message behind everything he was trying to say and for some reason, I still can't shake the feeling that we still don't know what he truly wanted. It really makes you wonder about what his true motives and goals really were, Vegeta says, gazing into the stars above them. It's a very unsettling feeling to have, knowing that he was hiding even more, even in death. We and the others stand in silence for a few moments, pondering the events of the past week, but maybe none more affected than Vegeta who was truly singled out by the angel for reasons we still may not truly understand. But for now, the battle is over and the universe may finally return to normality. My, my, a familiar voice says, as we see a hand knocking at the door, but it's at this moment, that hand begins to sprout a fully developed crescent symbol. Well, I guess I'm up next, Myrno says, completely intact and not even looking like he just had a battle of a lifetime with Goku and Vegeta. Everything went exactly as planned, he says. Well, I don't want to keep doing this forever and relying on my clones, so I guess I should just do this now. As he walks into the dimly lit room, it becomes eerily obvious where Myrno has come now. Now then, it's been quite a while, my lord, he says, walking into the quarters of the Omni King. Those bodyguards you have there look a bit too comfortable just watching over you all day. I guess I'll start with them, he says, nonchalantly stretching. Did you miss me? Both of the Omni Kings are shocked that someone not only made it into the temple without permission, but completely undetected as well, as they both sit up with surprise on their faces. I said, did you miss me? Myrno asks again, now showing a much more devious look on his face, as the final part of his plan seems to be coming together before our very eyes. Because I've missed you, he continues. Now then, 
great Omni Kings. How about we have some fun?